что вот наш переводчик Рустам также и письменно написал эту инструкцию. Можете посмотреть в чат-боксе. Вот. Также нужно выбрать язык презентации. Един из reminding the Russian-speaking delegates the housekeeping rules. The translation in English has already been activated. Yes, that's correct. You have to select the English channel. So Mirdin is speaking. In order to be in order to be able to ask your questions during the workshop, you may click on the raise hand icon on your screen. And in that case, if there are too many participants willing to ask their questions, you will have to wait for your turn. Otherwise, if there is only one, you will just have to wait for your turn. And once the consultant sees your notification, he or she will give you the floor to ask your question. So the housekeeping rules are quite simple. They think that all of you have already participated in this kind of uh, workshops, uh, so it must be pretty simple for you. Otherwise, please ask, do not hesitate to ask questions. And I think that we are still waiting for other participants from the Ministry of Transport and the Ministry of Finance. And uh, you can see that we will start at 1.30 and we will be at this workshop till 4.30 Bishkek time. And of course, we will give the floor for opening remarks to the Deputy Minister of Transport and Communications, following which the unit head of the ADB's Kyrgyz resident mission, Mr. Lewis Workman, Stephen Lewis Workman, will give his welcome remarks. And before we start our presentation, let me introduce to you the uh, ADB staff and consultants participating in this workshop. Some of them will participate directly and present their presentations, uh, deliver their presentations. Uh, of course, uh, first of all, this is, uh, let me introduce uh, Stephen Lewis Workman. He is uh, the unit head at the uh, Kyrgyz resident mission of the Asian Development Bank. Mr. Thomas Hertz is uh, the senior transport expert in the regional department for uh, Central and West Asia. Ms. Unchmekardene. She is uh, the lead specialist on transport at the same within the same department. Mr. Michael Anyala, he is uh, the senior expert on road asset management systems. And uh, we are also having three consultants. We have two consultants, uh, Mr. Cartier Van Diesel. He is uh, the RAMS consultant uh, who has been working under this technical assistant project for the CARIC and another consultant. The other consultant is uh, Mr. Silvio, and he is also responsible for implementation of uh, some of the phases, for specifically for phase one under the road asset management system development in the Kyrgyz Republic. And we also have an Marianne, she is the senior operations assistant as well as Pilar Sahilar and Jovini Dia. They are the consultants. And uh, let me also introduce to you our interpreters, Ms. Svetlana Cherkova and Rustam Sotaev. So let me now, without further ado, give the floor for his opening remarks to the Deputy Minister of Transport, Mr. Kenbaev the Deputy Minister of Transport and Communications. Thank you very much for your attention. Спасибо за внимание. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, dear colleagues and participants of this workshop. I am happy to see all of you and greet all of you at this workshop on the road asset management system and development in the Kyrgyz Republic. And this topic is quite important 
for the development of the road sector in the Kyrgyz Republic. And I believe that the road asset management system will broaden significantly our capacity and optimize our budget allocations for the road sector. And under the project, we are focused on the development and the establishment and development of the road asset management system that will cover the majority of the road network in the Kyrgyz Republic and the representatives of the Ministry of Transport and Communications are looking forward to learning more about this system and going forward he's checking if there is an interpretation so going forward they will work closely on the road asset management system and we'll use it to analyze and forecast our needs and costs and uh, they, it, this system will also help us uh, optimize uh, our efforts focused on the maintenance road maintenance and we will also transfer to the new concept of the road sector development uh, from qualitative indicators, from quantitative indicators to qualitative ones, which is why I would like uh, to express our gratitude to our consultants, Mr. Cartier, for training the experts in the Kyrgyz Republic. The workshop today will be important for those who are not yet familiar with the RAM system, as well as for those who have already been working with the system for a long time. And it will also be important for the phase two of the RAM's development in the Kyrgyz Republic, as well as for the institutionalization of the system and ensuring its further sustainability. These are the critical elements of implementation of this system. And it will help us implement our different initiatives, which is why the Ministry of Transport and Communications of the Kyrgyz Republic is involved in drafting new laws and regulations that will establish requirements on the implementation of the RAM system in the Kyrgyz Republic. And uh, in conclusion, let me thank the participants and wish all of us success. Thank you. Over to you. Thank you very much, Mr. Kainbay, for your opening remarks. And Mr. Stephen Lewis Walkman, uh, Project Administration Unit Head of Kyrgyz Resident Mission. So welcome remarks. Thank you very much, Mirden. Uh, can everyone hear me okay? Uh, yes, it's fine. Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. Um, good afternoon. Uh, I would like to express uh, my warmest welcome uh, to the Deputy Minister and all of the program participants. Uh, over the past decade, uh, road investments in Kara countries have focused on construction and rehabilitation of regional roads that connect countries and facilitate trade. But to ensure long-term sustainability of these roads, they must be properly maintained. Road asset management system and performance-based maintenance contracts are some of the tools that can help us. In 2019, a new Carrick transport strategy for 2030 was endorsed by Carrick ministers. Strategy focused on roads and road asset management, railways, cross-border transport and logistics and road safety. This strategy emphasized the need for allocating sufficient funds to construct, rehabilitate, and maintain roads, allocating those funds based on analytical tools, including RAMs, institutional reforms to promote better road asset management, and increased private sector participation in road operations and maintenance. Today's workshop uh, will advance the Carrick Transport Strategy. ADB is providing road asset management assessments for each member country, as well as training to support the implementation of RAMs in selected uh, developing member countries. ADB has retained uh, Mr. Serge Cartier van Dissel, a renowned expert in the field of road asset management and uh, the author of 
the Compendium of Best Practices in Road Asset Management, which was produced under a previous CARIC project. Today's presentation will focus on general aspects of road asset management systems and to further promote the development of RAMs in the Kyrgyz Republic. Thank you all for taking the time to attend today's training. We really hope that it is useful for you and for the country. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Stephen, uh, for your welcome speech. And, uh, and uh, now we uh, shift to the presentation part of our workshop. And uh, uh, Serge, please go ahead with your presentation. Let's start presentations. Good uh, afternoon to all of you. Um, I'll be presenting the, the English version, but there's also a Russian version that you can access as uh, Mirdin has explained uh, earlier in this meeting. So the, the objective today is to, uh, the end objective is to talk about the next phase of ADB support to the development of a road asset management system. But before we start that discussion, we have uh, three presentations that look at, first of all, uh, the current presentation, which will look at what is a road asset ma management system exactly. Uh, some of you may already know that and be more familiar with it. Some of you may have less uh, familiarity with, uh, with road asset management systems, but it's it talks, uh, I will briefly talk about what the function of a RAMS is, what the purpose of a RAMS is, and why do we want to develop a road asset management system, but also to look at where we are in uh, the Kyrgyz Republic in, in terms of RAMS development, what stage of development are we and what still needs to be uh, done. My colleague, Mr. Mr. Consta Servio, has been working in Kyrgyz Republic for uh, the last uh, two, three years on, on the development of a road asset management system. And he will present what the ADB has been doing in support of road asset management system development, uh, what has been achieved so far, and what still needs to be done to complete the road asset management system. And then I will come back and we will talk a bit about the, the integration of the RAMs of the actual system into existing uh, the existing framework, and that looks at the institutional framework, uh, the capability of the Ministry of Transport to actually operate the RAMs uh, on an annual basis and to keep it operational, but also how can we uh, incorporate the RAMs into annual planning and budgeting procedures? Uh, how can we ensure that the funding levels that we identify as being necessary for uh, road maintenance and road repair how can we ensure that that funding is made available? And lastly, how can we ensure that there is a, a capacity in the country to actually carry out these works, to carry out the maintenance and the, the different types of repair that we identify as being necessary? So this is the agenda for today. And after these three presentations, we will have a discussion about the next phase of ADB support. So let me first start by what is a road asset management system and a road asset management system can have many forms and many uh, levels of complexity. But basically it's any system that is used to collect data, to manage that data in, in, in terms of a database and to analyze that road data with the purpose of using it for planning and programming works, especially maintenance and repair works but it can go from a very simple system based in uh, Microsoft Excel, for instance, to a very complex system that is uh, web-based, that has uh, video data, that has mapping data, that uh, incorporates a bridge management system, that incorporates a contract management systems. It can be very complex, it can be very simple, but in the end, they all serve to support annual planning and programming uh, procedures. And the main purpose of any RAMs is to optimize the level 
of road funding, but also especially the allocation of the available road funding uh, and in relation to the medium and long term results regarding road conditions and road user costs. So we want to improve road conditions over time and we want to reduce the road user costs and the costs of transport for the national economy. Um, so often the elements that we see in road asset management system is that it uh, uh, defines the, 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 the needs for road maintenance, for road repair, and in some cases also for road improvements to, to a higher standard. Um, that based on uh, that is done based on uh, data that is collected for the network, and then we mainly talk about inventory data. So what roads are out there? What uh, structures are need to be maintained? What is the condition of of those structures and those roads? And the traffic data that gives us an idea of the importance of different roads, but also gives us an idea of how quickly a road is likely to deteriorate because of that traffic. And using that data, the rounds allow us, allows us to determine how much money, how much budget we need to actually maintain and repair those roads on an annual basis. But of course, we don't always have uh, sufficient budget to address all the needs. So rounds also helps us to allocate the available budget that we have. How can we best allocate that to different roads to different road networks, to different treatment types, uh, how much has to go to maintenance, how much should go to uh, current repair, midterm repair, capital repair. And this allocation is done based on uh, agreed prioritization criteria. So these are often economic criteria. Uh, that means that we, uh, we look at how can we reduce the costs of transport for the people who use these roads but they can also include social criteria, like uh, providing minimum access to remote areas uh, in the country. And apart from uh, determining the best allocation of, of the available budget, the rounds also allows us to predict what that budget, uh, what kind of impact that budget will have on future road conditions, road, road network conditions, and on future maintenance and repair costs. So we can look at different budget levels and we can determine what will, if we have this budget level, what will the condition of my road network be like in 10 years from now? What happens if I increase it by 20%? Will that have a significant impact on, on road conditions? And lastly, it allows us to, uh, to monitor the road network over time. Now, when we talk about road asset management systems, it's important to distinguish network planning from project planning. And a road asset management system is a network planning tool. So we plan for the entire network and we plan on a quite general level, which means we need limited data, but we need all that data for all the roads in the road network. We are planning for the entire network or a subway network. So we, we can plan for all the national roads or we can plan for all the paved national roads, for instance, or international roads. Um, but then we need data for all those paved international roads. We cannot plan for roads for which we do not have the data. Um, and based on the data that we have, we can identify the best treatment approaches for the different roads in that road network. And we can determine how much budget is needed and how that budget uh, is best allocated to the different roads to different treatment types. And we try and limit the, the amount of data we collect uh, in order to reduce the costs of the road asset management system because we're talking about the entire network. In, in, in the case of uh, the Kyrgyz Republic, we're talking about nearly 20,000 kilometers of roads that are managed by the ministry. So collecting data for all those roads uh, costs a lot of effort and a lot of money. So we need to reduce the amount of data that we collect. Now, this is very different from project level planning. Project level planning is what we do when we already have a budget 
uh, approved for a specific road, or we expect to have a budget approved for a specific road. And then we start planning uh, the project for that road. So that could be uh, a capital repair project, it could be a midterm repair project, it could be uh, a current repair or a routine maintenance project. But only at the time that we have the budget available, then we start determining exactly what needs to be done. So we need a lot more data for that specific road, but we only collect that data for the roads for which we have a budget uh, available. For the other roads for which we don't have the budget available, we don't need to collect that data because it will not be used. So the, the big difference we, we have to be clear on is that for road asset management systems, we collect a limited amount of data, but we collect it for the entire road network. Whereas for project level planning, we collect much more detailed data, but only for some roads. Now, the benefits of a road asset management system, why do we want a road asset management system? So I'm forgetting to say we're, we're on slide five, uh, Marianne. The benefits of a road asset management system is that it allows uh, objective identification of all treatment needs and costs. So by collecting data for the entire network, we can determine exactly how much budget we need to treat the entire uh, road network, which is different from traditional planning systems where we depend on, in the case of Kyrgyz Republic, the, the depths, for instance, to identify the maintenance needs. They will identify the priority maintenance and repair needs, and those will be uh, informed to the higher levels. But that does not necessarily include all the maintenance and repair needs. So the budget request that they send in is maybe not the entire budget that is required to treat all roads. By using data from for the entire network, we, we can carry out a, an objective assessment of the maintenance and repair needs. It also allows us to optimize the available budget. Um, to optimize the, the impact on, on um, reducing road user costs, to, re, uh, to reduce the costs of transport for the economy. It allows us to optimize the impact on future road network conditions. We can see how we can best allocate that budget so that five years from now, 10 years from now, uh, we will have the, 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 the best road network conditions that we can achieve with that budget. And we, by doing, using this type of uh, allocation, looking uh, five years ahead, 10 years ahead, uh, we see that we, there's a shift towards preventive maintenance to prevent damages from occurring rather than trying to fix the, the damages that have already occurred. And that it, um, means that in, in the short term, you will uh, see that some roads will deteriorate but in the long term, in, in five years, uh, 10 years time, you will see that a bigger portion of the road network uh, is brought or kept in, in good and fair condition. And lastly, it allows us to determine exactly how much money we should allocate to the road sector or to road maintenance and road repair. Um, it can allow us to determine what happens to road network conditions and to road user costs if we uh, increase the, the budget by 25%. What happens if we increase it by 50%? What will be uh, uh, the, the, the benefit for road users of increasing that? And that make, gives us the opportunity to uh, find a balance between available budgets and uh, what we actually want to achieve in the country in terms of roads in good and fair condition. Slide six. Now, a road asset management system also has costs involved. And a major part of that cost is the collection of data for the entire network. Uh, usually this is done on an annual basis. It may not be the entire network each year, but at least for a portion of the network we collected each year and every uh, two, three, four, five years, we make sure that we collect data for all, 
all the roads in the road network. Uh, this cost is uh, dependent on how much data we collect uh, and how we collect that data, what kind of equipment we use for that, but also how often we collect it. If we collect it every year, you can imagine that the cost will be higher than if we collect it every three years or every five years. Um, but apart from the data collection, we also have the database itself, which needs to be operated uh, uh, and the data needs to be analyzed, which means we need a small staff, a small team of dedicated staff that will be involved in database operation and data analysis. And they will also need some resources for the operation of the, the rounds, uh, computer equipment, uh, computer software, um, printers and plotters for, for preparing maps, for instance. So there will be some resources required there apart from the staff costs themselves. But we, what we see is that the costs of uh, the road asset management system, the costs of operating around are more than compensated by the increased efficiency in using the available road sector budget. So by using the budget more efficiently, we have long-term savings by carrying out uh, midterm repairs at, in, a, in a timely manner. We can avoid the more costly capital repairs. So that saves us money in the, in the long run. Now, when we talk about a road asset management system, when we talk about the system, we are mainly talking about a central database. Uh, and we collect data for that database to enter into the database. We have different types of survey equipment and different types of data that can be collected, but that all goes into the central database. The database allows us, provides us easy access to the data and it allows us to combine different data sets. So instead of just knowing how many uh, kilometers of roads are paved and how many kilometers of roads are in uh, good condition, for instance, we can combine the data sets and we can uh, ask the, the database to calculate how many kilometers of roads are paved and in good condition. And of course, that is still quite simple, but you can do more complicated uh, combinations of, of data. And usually those combinations of data are uh, prepared using different types of reports. So most databases, most RAMS databases uh, can provide different types of reports. But the database will also combine uh, tables of data with, for instance, GIS maps, and in some cases with uh, video footage or photographs of the different structures. So by combining all that data, we have a much ba uh, broader basis to uh, carry out different types of analysis and uh, assessments. Uh, the third element of RAMS is the data analysis, the, the planning module, that we actually have a, a separate set of algorithms or software that we use to analyze all the data and to determine what treatments are necessary. Do we need to carry out routine maintenance or uh, current repair or midterm repair or capital repair or even improvement of the road? What type of treatments are necessary based on the characteristics of each road? what will the cost be of carrying out those treatments, uh, but also when, when are those treatments necessary? Are they necessary now? Can they be postponed? Can they be carried out in five years from now? And uh, a planning module will also often help us to determine what happens if we carry out a different treatment type, or what happens if we postpone the treatment type? What, what does that mean for road conditions? So that is a very important part of, of any rounds. So if we look at the system itself, we have three elements, the data collection, the data management or the database and the data analysis. Uh, the data collection, it's important that we have data for inventory, for the condition and for traffic and sometimes other data. And that that data is up to date, that is not too old. Condition data that is 10 years old will not be of any use to us anymore because the condition will have changed. It might have improved, it might have worsened. Um, 
we have the database where all this data is, is put together and we are able to combine different data sets. And we have the data analysis, the, the planning tool that uh, allows us to identify what budget we need, uh, how do we prioritize different uh, roads to allocate the uh, specific budget we have. If we don't have enough budget to do all the roads, which is more than likely, which roads uh, do we carry out the, uh, the, the, the treatments in, which roads will get prioritized. And this will be done using different algorithms or software to uh, determine priorities, but also to predict the impact of those priorities on future road conditions. And of course, it, it may incorporate other modules like a bridge management system or a specific tunnel management system or a contract management system. The complexity can be increased over time. Slide nine. Um, but the, the road asset management system is only useful if we can actually integrate it into the wider framework, which means we have to create an institutional framework for actually operating the road asset management system. So this system has to have a, a number of dedicated staff who will operate the database, who will ensure that the data is collected every year, who will carry out the data analysis or contract out the uh, analysis of that data to support the planning. But we also have to make sure that the RAMS is actually used in annual planning and budgeting procedures. Usually each country has specific procedures in place for the annual planning and budgeting for, for the next year's works. And we need to see how can the RAMS and the analysis carried out on, on the RAMS data, how can that be incorporated into those procedures so that th that analysis is forms the basis for the annual planning and uh, the annual budgeting. We also have to look at the financing. Uh, a, a, a RAMS can help us uh, optimize the, the budget allocation uh, to, to different roads and to different treatment types. But if we don't have enough financing for road maintenance and road repair, in the end, the road network will deteriorate. We, we need sufficient budget to actually keep uh, road conditions at least as good as they are, and preferably to uh, improve them over time. So that means increasing the amount of financing that goes to road maintenance and road repair. And lastly, we have to look at the implementation modalities. If we're going to change uh, the types of maintenance and repair we carry out or increase the volumes of those repairs that we carry out, we need sufficient capacity in the country to actually implement those works. Uh, if often we, we see where in countries where they introduce a road asset management system, we see a shift from uh, capital repair towards midterm repair, carrying out more midterm repair because it's uh, economically more efficient. But that means we need a capacity in the country from contractors or from uh, state uh, maintenance uh, enterprises like, like the DEPS to actually implement those works. Slide 10. The, when, when we look at where the Kyrgyz Republic actually is in terms of RAMS development, we see three phases of RAMS development when, when we look at the different countries. The first phase is a piloting phase where we have a small uh, level uh, application of the RAMS. Generally, uh, we, we collect data for a small part of the network as a pilot. We have a simple database simply to store the data and we carry out uh, data analysis using off the shelf software. So that could be RoNet, could be HDM4, there, there are other software out there. And this is often carried out by consultants. The objective of that phase is to show how the road asset management system works. And in the Kyrgyz Republic, you've also gone through that phase with, for instance, the, the World Bank project, which developed the, the Excel-based uh, database. The second phase is where we develop the, the road asset management system further. Uh, usually we try and uh, collect data for the entire road network, or at least for all the paved roads, for instance. Uh, we develop a more comprehensive 
database with extended functionality that includes GIS mapping, for instance, it may include video. Uh, it, often it's uh, remotely accessible through, through the internet or an intranet. And uh, it will have a more uh, comprehensive data analysis, uh, often through an integrated planning module, sometimes continued through external software. But here we also see a, a greater involvement of government uh, in either directly carrying out the data collection and the data uh, management and analysis or outsourcing this to uh, domestic companies, but still with project consultant support. So this is the phase that uh, the Kyrgyz Republic is currently in the, the development phase. And then the, the third phase of, of uh, RAM's development in, in the different countries is where we see the integration, uh, where we see that the existing RAM system is integrated into uh, the institutional framework, uh, that there it is integrated into uh, government planning and budgeting procedures, that it uh, has an impact on the, uh, the funding levels uh, provided for road repair and, and maintenance and that there is a, a the strengthening of the domestic implementation capacity to respond to these new priorities especially midterm repair we see that the volume of midterm repair is likely to increase so that capacity needs to be created and just finally to in slide 11 to show you um, how the Kyrgyz Republic compares to other countries in, in the Karak region. This is an overview of the current status of RAM's development in the Karak countries, the 11 Karak countries, including Kyrgyz. So in Kyrgyz, we see that uh, we've surpassed the, the piloting phase and we're currently in the, the development phase that is well underway. And that is uh, the situation for many of the countries in, in the Karak region. There are a few countries which have uh, already moved on to, to the integration phase. Uh, the most progressed are Georgia and Pakistan. They already have in, fully integrated the road asset management system into their uh, uh, the surrounding framework. So they have a, a clear institutional framework for annual data collection, for annual uh, um, operation of, of the database and analysis of the data and using that data analysis as the basis for their planning. And that planning influences the, the amount of funding they get and they have sufficient capacity to actually implement the works that, that they have prioritized. In China, we see that some uh, the road management is actually decentralized to the provinces. And we see that some provinces have reached that level of integration other provinces have not yet reached that level. In Azerbaijan, they are partially integrated, um, but they have difficulties, for instance, in, in updating the, the data collection every year. So th this is just to show that there are some countries that are more progressed, but most of the countries are in the same phase as the Kyrgyz Republic. Uh, Kazakhstan is in very much the same phase, for instance, they, they have recently developed their road asset management system, but they are still busy integrating, uh, starting the integration into annual systems. Uh, Tajikistan, for instance, another neighboring country is only just starting the development of their road asset management system. So let me stop here and uh, I will hand over to my colleague, Mr. Consta Sirvio. So uh, Mr. Sirvio has been working in, in Kyrgyz the, the past few years on developing the road asset management system there. And he will talk more in detail about what has been done in Kyrgyz and what still needs to be done to complete this phase of development. Oh, thank you, sir.
So <clears throat> we have been uh, developing uh, the road asset management system uh, for almost uh, three years now in the Kyrgyz Republic. And uh, I go through uh, what uh, the project is uh, about and uh, what uh, we have achieved and uh, what uh, should be done in the future. And uh, our terms of reference uh, was rather clear. Uh, we need to develop um, a rather comprehensive uh, road asset management system and uh, uh, the look at uh, not only the technical matters, such as uh, developing the system um, and collecting uh, all the required data, but uh, also to look at uh, the institutional side of uh, things. And, uh, Oh, we have put also a lot of effort on training uh, uh, because uh, <clears throat> this is uh, one of the most important aspects that uh, during the development phase, we want to transfer uh, the technology and knowledge uh, uh, to uh, the ministry so that uh, it uh, can be operated and run uh, without the consultant in the future. And uh, the presentation will go through this, uh, uh, the scope, uh, these uh, 13 different items uh, one by one. But as a summary, let's take a look at the main achievements uh, so far. As we are talking about uh, a rather complex system, uh, um, <clears throat> we decided to procure a dedicated server computer uh, where all the uh, all the software as well as uh, the collected data uh, is stored, and uh, we also procured some uh, uh, desk desktop computers, and uh, <clears throat> uh, very importantly, radar based traffic counters uh, uh, for collecting a traffic count information, which is, was uh, previously done manually. And during the project, uh, um, today it's uh, around 7,000 kilometers uh, of uh, road condition and traffic data has been uh, collected. Uh, and uh, we have developed uh, uh, the information systems, uh, uh, which means that uh, we have uh, the road database, road information system, as well as uh, the planning system in place. Uh, uh, requiring still uh, some uh, fine tuning uh, to uh, meet uh, uh, the needs uh, as well as uh, possible. And uh, with this uh, planning system as being uh, web based, uh, uh, there is an access uh, to all the local maintenance units and regional offices uh, to the system, and uh, they can view uh, the collected data through geographic information system that was implemented. And we have uh, uh, already done uh, some data analysis, uh, strategy analysis, uh, and so on, and we'll continue towards the end of the project. Uh. And as mentioned, uh, training uh, has been conducted uh, during several occasions. So the first uh, item uh, in the scope is uh, stakeholder management. Uh, and uh, we have created uh, the initial plan, and we have uh, I had uh, several uh, seminars uh, uh, to the stakeholders. Uh, and uh, um, <clears throat> here is a list uh, of uh, uh, some of them. And uh, <clears throat> this, uh, this is important that we share information uh, that uh, <clears throat> the Ministry of uh, Transport and Communication has now a uh, very valuable data and the planning system uh, that uh, uh, would benefit also uh, the stakeholders. Uh, and uh, uh, it's uh, <clears throat> well, the most important, of course, uh, are the stakeholders uh, um, within uh, within uh, uh, the actual uh, road asset uh, management uh, and financing. And uh, uh, <clears throat> most of the training, uh, I think, has gone to production innovation center. And uh, <clears throat> but we haven't forgotten uh, the regional offices and uh, local. Uh, maintenance units uh, 
uh, as uh, their task will be to use uh, as a web-based uh, maintenance planning uh, tool. And then uh, uh, the State University for Construction uh, and uh, Architecture, PUSTA, uh, has been actively involved uh, in, uh, in our seminars and trainings. And uh, well, we also lately uh, approached uh, uh, the stakeholders with a questionnaire uh, to get their views uh, of what kind of focus uh, the ministry should uh, have uh, in the road dust management. Uh, and uh, as we get a lot of uh, deliverables, uh, dates and information systems uh, during the projects, uh, uh, we will uh, uh, disseminate uh, the most relevant ones to the uh, stakeholders in the end of the projects. And the second uh, part uh, of the project is uh, business process review and analysis. Uh, and uh, uh, there are some findings here. Uh, first of all, uh, it seems that the long term and medium term planning processes are currently missing and uh, sh uh, they should be introduced uh, in the future. And uh, the regional level uh, is not currently very strong, uh, and internationally, there is a trend uh, that uh, uh, it is uh, much stronger, and uh, there could be a service level agreement between uh, uh, the ministry and the regional offices related to uh, road asset management and maintenance. And uh, when it comes to this um, more capital intense uh, maintenance, periodic maintenance and rehabilitation, uh, that planning uh, should be done at uh, regional and the ministry level, levels, and not at, uh, at the local levels. While routine and winter maintenance planning, uh, uh, that uh, can be done completely at the, the local maintenance unit level. And uh, uh, there should be uh, transparent uh, criteria for allocating uh, funding uh, uh, to regional offices and uh, local maintenance units. Uh, uh, based on uh, the network length, uh, condition, and importance, uh, and uh, that should be discussed in the future. That's uh, uh, what uh, this uh, criteria and uh, uh, the mechanism uh, should be. And then uh, very detailed routine maintenance uh, work uh, uh, supervision is not really needed at, uh, at the ministry level. And uh, all this data collection uh, uh, that is currently done by PIC uh, for our projects, uh, that should uh, continue and uh, it should be done uh, in a centralized manner uh, to get the quality uh, data with uh, established uh, processes. And then uh, very importantly, to have RAMs sustainable, there should be annual budgets for management of RAMs, and that includes the data collection. And uh, well, we have noticed that uh, road maintenance funding uh, should be increased. Uh, we have done uh, the strategy analysis uh, about this. And uh, um, <clears throat> we emphasize uh, that some of the data collection uh, should be done uh, every year. So when we talk about, uh, for example, road uh, condition survey, uh, it's better to divide uh, the network uh, so that uh, some of the data is collected every year, because uh, then uh, uh, this uh, production innovation center would be kept uh, <clears throat> operational <clears throat> as well as RAMs, and uh, then uh, the knowledge uh, uh, would not be uh, uh, fading uh, and uh, uh, the experts uh, would not be uh, uh, <clears throat> moving out of uh, PIC if uh, there is no work uh, for uh, several years. And uh, <clears throat> uh, this RAMS unit, uh, it should be strengthened uh, so that uh, it's going to fully take uh, control of uh, RAMS uh, management. Uh, and uh, um, <clears throat> What is needed is, uh, uh, of course, maintenance planning for roads and the bridges, but also uh, uh, this uh, geographic information system uh, expertise uh, 
uh, to keep uh, asset location referencing system uh, up to date and valid uh, and also software and the systems expertise to uh, keep uh, the system running and uh, <clears throat> In the future, uh, the idea is that the uh, RAM software uh, is utilized uh, uh, <clears throat> the main source for the data uh, related to road network and uh, uh, the main uh, tool for planning uh, of maintenance. And uh, <clears throat> oh, this is one view how to look at the processes uh, from left to right uh, we have uh, the main processes uh, related to road asset management uh, and then uh, in the bottom uh, we have uh, support uh, processes and uh, uh, this uh, our review uh, we will put everything in the uh, road asset management manual uh, and uh, show how uh, these different processes uh, uh, should be done now. And uh, yet another way of looking at uh, the business uh, uh, processes uh, is this uh, swim lane view uh, with uh, uh, responsibilities, uh, uh, responsible organizations, and then uh, uh, different tasks and uh, uh, connections uh, uh, of the tasks. Uh, and here is uh, um, a maintenance uh, planning process that uh, you are already uh, familiar with. Uh, the foundation of uh, road asset management system data is uh, a proper uh, network referencing system or asset location referencing system. And uh, um, in Kyrgyzstan, uh, there are very long roads uh, and uh, Therefore, the long roads uh, uh, should be broken into uh, sections uh, uh, because uh, otherwise it might be difficult to locate uh, the exact uh, points uh, on the road network. And uh, in the data collection phase, uh, uh, the road network was divided uh, uh, to certain uh, uh, sections uh, to facilitate uh, uh, the data collection. And these uh, uh, sections uh, are in the database. Although that uh, the current convention is not to use them, but uh, this is uh, uh, the future discussion uh, uh, whether uh, these uh, road sections uh, would be more institutionalized uh, within the ministry. But what is uh, important is uh, that uh, uh, both roads and the sections uh, they start and end uh, on uh, permanent structures on the road network, uh, uh, preferably. Uh, different junctions, uh, so-called location reference points. And uh, <clears throat> we have been uh, uh, fixing uh, uh, the data of this uh, referencing system uh, uh, during uh, the project as uh, uh, <clears throat> we have we noticed that uh, uh, some of the roads uh, may start uh, uh, in the middle of a village uh, uh, without a clear uh, <clears throat> location referencing point. And this is uh, the kind of uh, work uh, that uh, uh, the GIS experts uh, within the RAMS unit uh, should be doing, uh, keeping uh, the network referencing system up to date and valid. In the performance management uh, framework, uh, we start with uh, uh, the stakeholders. Uh, what is uh, the expected level of our service uh, of the stakeholders? And uh, oh, we have uh, sent questionnaires to um, uh, several of them, and uh, we are still waiting for answers. And here's an example that's uh, what is uh, regarded uh, uh, the ma main safety problems uh, on the roads. And uh, <clears throat> these include uh, uh, lane jumping uh, of uh, the road users uh, poor overtaking uh, and drivers using uh, mobile phones. Uh, of course, uh, the road users, uh, they have uh, expectations not only regarding uh, the safety, but also uh, the road condition. 
and uh, we uh, need to see in the future that uh, what is uh, uh, the target uh, levels of a service uh, uh, that uh, the ministry wants to achieve and uh, what are uh, the exact uh, indicators that they are going to uh, use uh, what in the in the management and then the road asset management system uh, as uh, the data has been collected uh, on the road condition uh, for example and we get uh, the finance uh, information we <clears throat> can create uh, those uh, key performance indicators uh, that facilitate uh, or at least can facilitate uh, the management uh, uh, in in uh, uh, road uh, maintenance and uh, other uh, operations and uh, typical key performance indicators are uh, road condition the percentage of the roads in uh, good or poor condition um, another uh, very important is um, number of uh, fatalities in uh, uh, traffic accident in traffic accidents and uh, also uh, the financing levels uh, uh, for road uh, maintenance uh, this data collection we have transferred the knowledge uh, uh, to PIC and uh, we have prepared a manual how the data collection should uh, uh, take place and uh, important matters are to, of course, uh, know what kind of data needs to be collected. Uh, uh, also to understand uh, uh, the quality control of the data collection. And then uh, what is uh, quite often missing is uh, uh, the systematic approach uh, uh, to data collection and planning so that the uh, uh, data uh, collection follows uh, uh, preset uh, frequencies so that the, the, the entire road network is collected for international roughness index uh, every two years uh, uh, for example and this is uh, uh, quite often uh, um, the problem might be at the lack of uh, funding but if uh, um, the RAMS unit is uh, strengthened uh, and uh, there is annual budget, uh, uh, then uh, it's uh, the will and the knowledge that uh, um, <clears throat> the unit responsible for data collection uh, uh, <clears throat> should uh, acquire and uh, to understand that uh, it's uh, the data, it's uh, the valid and updated data uh, that uh, <clears throat> makes uh, the difference uh, in uh, in uh, maintenance planning. The database uh, has been uh, implemented, uh, it has been designed, uh, it is uh, up and running, uh, it is based on open source uh, platform, uh, there is no license costs uh, uh, related to it. Uh, and uh, now we just need to then uh, transfer the ownership of uh, the server to the ministry and uh, the hosting will take place. Uh, uh, at the ministry's uh, premises. And uh, all the data that has been collected uh, is uh, already in the database, uh, uh, except uh, for uh, the newest data collection round that uh, recently started, uh, because it requires the first processing uh, before it can be imported in the database. And uh, <clears throat> Uh, the database it also includes uh, uh, this asset location referencing system uh, it also includes uh, uh, the maintenance works and unit costs uh, that are used for maintenance planning it includes uh, the prioritization criteria that are used in maintenance planning and we also incorporated uh, uh, the bridge information that was collected during uh, our JICA projects uh, and this uh, database uh, is a central repository of information 
uh, utilized uh, by uh, the other information tools, road information system, maintenance planning uh, uh, system, and geographic information system. And uh, here is uh, one of um, the user interfaces. Uh, this is uh, the road information system, which is a desktop application uh, that uh, uh, should be used by the main users uh, within the uh, <coughs> RAMS unit. And uh, <coughs> it combines uh, a map view as well as uh, uh, graphical charts of uh, uh, the data, as well as uh, <coughs> photos. It could have uh, videos, but uh, uh, <coughs> the data was collected uh, as photos by every 10 meters. So <coughs> it is almost, uh, almost like a video. And uh, <coughs> in this picture, you can see that uh, uh, we have uh, several information systems. Uh, we have uh, uh, different software and databases uh, that are integrated together. And that this makes uh, uh, the RAMs uh, uh, running. And uh, uh, here, uh, this uh, blue round uh, figures uh, uh, represent uh, database, uh, databases, uh, and the green ones, uh, different uh, software. And the most, most important uh, software uh, to be used uh, in RAMs. Uh, is this uh, uh, RMS uh, road information system uh, and then the web-based uh, GIS uh, and the web-based uh, planning tool. We have also HTM4 introduced uh, uh, to the ministry. Uh, we conducted training for one week. And uh, <clears throat> this is also a powerful tool uh, and to be utilized, uh, especially for long-term planning. Uh, we didn't want to introduce HTM4 for annual planning because uh, the system is uh, very complex and it doesn't allow web-based access. Uh, it would be rather difficult uh, uh, to have it uh, as an annual uh, maintenance planning tool when uh, uh, there are quite many people engaged uh, in the planning. So therefore, we developed uh, uh, this web-based uh, uh, planning tool. And uh, as mentioned, this road inventory uh, has been collected. Uh, it's almost like collecting a, a road passport uh, information, but this is uh, tailored uh, for RAMS use. So information uh, that is needed uh, for network level planning uh, has been collected. And the 7,000 kilometers of paved roads uh, have been surveyed uh, so far. When the data is collected uh, uh, from the field, uh, it requires uh, further processing. Uh, um, and this uh, inventory items uh, that are listed in the table, such as number of carriageways, number of lanes, uh, type of land use and terrain, uh, they are uh, extracted uh, from the photos that are collected uh, uh, in, from the field. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> there was uh, this uh, trust vehicle uh, uh, utilized uh, by PIC for the data collection. And uh, <clears throat> uh, these uh, data items, uh, some of them are uh, very important uh, when we do maintenance planning. Uh, uh, for example, surface type and uh, width of uh, pavements. Uh, uh, <clears throat> it is uh, <clears throat> important to allocate the right uh, treatments on the right surface types, and uh, also the width, uh, pavement width, uh, uh, <clears throat> that uh, really affects uh, uh, the costs uh, uh, of maintenance plans. And uh, these are some of the photos that are can already be extracted, uh, obtained from uh, the web-based uh, uh, geographic, geographic information system uh, 
which is uh, uh, integrated in this web-based uh, maintenance planning tool. So regional offices, uh, local maintenance units uh, uh, who have access uh, to uh, the system, uh, they can uh, visualize uh, the dates on the map. And uh, on the left top uh, corner, we have, uh, uh, for example, Calvert, Calvert, Calvert location on the road network. And then uh, on the right, uh, we have a uh, uh, pavement width. So basically, all these inventory items that have been collected uh, can now be visualized uh, on, uh, on the map. And uh, <clears throat> then uh, uh, the other survey, uh, well, these uh, surveys, uh, um, <clears throat> they were done in the field at the same time, uh, but then uh, from the photos, uh, uh, this uh, road uh, uh, condition uh, variables uh, were inventorized. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> this thruster vehicle, uh, uh, <clears throat> it uh, has lasers uh, uh, so that the international reference index and routing uh, uh, could be uh, extracted. Uh, and from the photos, uh, uh, PIC detected uh, uh, cracking, uh, potholes, edge break, and batch batches and the traffic counting uh, has been done uh, on the 230 points uh, uh, so far and all the data uh, has been validated uh, and time stamped uh, and uh, visible through web-based GIS and uh, also this uh, road condition data uh, can be uh, visualized on the map uh, and uh, on the Top left, so we have a cracking, and uh, red color means that uh, we have uh, more cracking. It's more severe. For example, uh, in the south of uh, Easy Cool, uh, the roads uh, are rather uh, cracked. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> there are different types of cracking, and uh, uh, this so called alligator cracking uh, uh, it is often an indication of uh, uh, <clears throat> poor. Uh, bearing capacity so that the base layer is already in uh, poor condition and uh, in our decision uh, <clears throat> making uh, our criteria for maintenance planning uh, we take into consideration uh, uh, cracking so that uh, the system will then uh, uh, propose uh, uh, rehabilitation if uh, uh, the condition is really poor on the top uh, right we have a uh, international roughness index uh, which is a uh, um, very standardized uh, measure utilized uh, all around the world. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> the scale is so that uh, <clears throat> the condition is uh, poor uh, if uh, international roughness index uh, <clears throat> is uh, more than 10 or even more, more than 7. And uh, <clears throat> Um, I can also mention about this traffic. Uh, uh, this is important, uh, very important when we prioritize uh, the maintenance works. And the bottom right, so we have uh, uh, traffic volumes. Uh, here, uh, dark blue means that uh, there is not so much uh, uh, traffic. So those roads that have uh, high traffic, uh, uh, they uh, <clears throat> go top on the list uh, uh, for prioritization of uh, uh, the works. And uh, one of the important uh, items in the project is uh, the support system and the planning tool. And uh, we proposed that the HTM4 uh, is utilized uh, for long-term planning, uh, this so-called uh, strategy analysis. Uh, and we conducted uh, uh, the first uh, analysis uh, two years ago. Uh, <clears throat> it didn't have uh, all the data, but uh, enough to reveal uh, that uh, the maintenance budget uh, is currently uh, too low. And uh, <clears throat> uh, here we can see the different uh, 
uh, scenarios uh, uh, how the road condition uh, will develop uh, under different uh, budget constraints. Uh, and this uh, HTM4, it should be used uh, uh, every three to five years uh, uh, to <clears throat> see if uh, uh, the budget levels uh, are on the right, uh, uh, right quantities. And uh, <clears throat> uh, the maintenance planning tool for annual maintenance uh, uh, that is based on uh, uh, this condition index of roads and the so-called uh, uh, fun functional index uh, that combines uh, that combines uh, uh, traffic volumes and uh, uh, <clears throat> number of uh, villages and the importance of roads uh, the road class and they are combined as a priority index. And uh, uh, it's a web-based uh, system uh, uh, that is used for planning. And uh, <clears throat> now recently we <clears throat> also included uh, uh, the bridge information uh, and uh, uh, the bridge condition uh, uh, can be visualized on the map. Uh, the planning tool, uh, uh, <clears throat> To create the plans uh, is now uh, restricted uh, for the roads uh, uh, and uh, in the future it could be extended to the uh, bridges as well. Uh, the uh, user acceptance testing uh, uh, was done uh, and uh, the report is uh, being translated to Russian and you will get it uh, uh, soon. And uh, uh, some modifications uh, have been uh, uh, Done to the uh, systems based on uh, uh, the U UAT results. And uh, rolling works program, uh, the data is uh, already there, uh, and the, uh, the unconstrained uh, planning data is already there. Uh, and uh, we still need to uh, <coughs> compile this together to rolling works uh, our program. And this is uh, being done in the near future. And uh, this road asset management manual uh, is uh, a very important document when it gets ready as uh, we combine uh, uh, the guidelines how uh, RAMs uh, should be managed and uh, operated. Uh, so it uh, will have uh, uh, many important aspects such as uh, international trains in road asset management. Uh, also roles and responsibilities of uh, uh, different organizations related to uh, road asset management uh, and uh, uh, there will be uh, those uh, uh, business processes explained that uh, how for example planning uh, should take place uh, and uh, uh, it's not uh, detailed uh, saying that uh, uh, press uh, this button in this uh, software, but it uh, uh, shows that uh, which information tools uh, should be used uh, for which uh, use cases. And uh, <clears throat> the training uh, uh, we have conducted uh, um, <clears throat> training on uh, uh, those important aspects of uh, road asset management, including uh, uh, maintenance planning, and then uh, this HDM for software. Uh, we trained for user acceptance testing and the maintenance uh, planning tool training uh, has taken place. Uh, the other information system is uh, this road information system that should be used by the main uh, RAMS users. And uh, uh, very extensive training has been given on uh, different matters of uh, data collection. Uh, the training has been uh, both uh, hands-on training and uh, classroom training. And then uh, <clears throat> uh, closely related to data collection training is uh, uh, this road and pavement distress inventory training. So <clears throat> we have still time until at the end of the year uh, to uh, complete uh, the projects, uh, but uh, we have already identified uh, some aspects uh, uh, that uh, could uh, uh, could be done in the near future, in the next phase. Uh, for example, 
Additional data collection uh, is uh, important uh, so that uh, the ministry would know exactly uh, how many roads, how many kilometers of roads there are. Uh, so to speak, that's what's uh, what what is uh, what kind of asset and what is the value of uh, uh, the assets uh, uh, the ministry is uh, having, and. Uh, uh, the unpaved roads uh, are still a mystery. Uh, we don't know uh, their whereabouts uh, exactly and uh, uh, their lengths uh, as well. And uh, we cannot use the same uh, uh, trust a vehicle to survey these roads because uh, uh, they are often in a poor condition and uh, therefore new survey equipment would be needed. Uh, full bridge inspections uh, uh, would be needed uh, uh, to get uh, more up-to-date uh, information and also to get uh, condition uh, uh, by different bridge components, not just one uh, overall uh, condition, because uh, uh, <clears throat> sometimes bridges can uh, collapse uh, uh, if uh, uh, <clears throat> proper bridge inspection has not been uh, taking place. Also, culvert uh, inspections uh, uh, should be done in the future. And uh, uh, pavement strength uh, uh, surveys, uh, there is a potential to save uh, money uh, in the future so that uh, well, we would move towards uh, more preventive uh, maintenance and not uh, apply rehabilitation when the roads get uh, uh, to bad condition. And uh, in the institutional strengthening, uh, uh, I believe that uh, uh, this university cooperation uh, will be beneficial because uh, then uh, uh, the students uh, uh, would be exposed to uh, road asset uh, management and the concept uh, before they come to work to the ministry. And uh, uh, private sector participation uh, should be increased uh, in the future. And uh, or probably uh, <clears throat> some merging should take place uh, uh, with local maintenance units. Uh, uh, regional offices uh, uh, should be strengthened. Uh, and then uh, <clears throat> different uh, rules uh, uh, should be uh, figured out uh, for uh, <clears throat> funding allocation uh, between the regions and uh, local maintenance units. Uh, and then the <clears throat> Uh, stakeholders' participation uh, uh, in the planning process uh, uh, can be further refined. Uh, and uh, uh, one thing is that uh, these unpaved roads, uh, they have been uh, neglected uh, uh, quite much. Uh, uh, and there uh, we would need a more, more methodology and uh, uh, maintenance uh, to keep uh, them in uh, good condition. Uh, perhaps uh, then uh, uh, there are some tools that uh, uh, would be needed. Uh, uh, so one aspect is uh, this uh, data collection for unpaved roads uh, that would require a GPS uh, uh, camera and the low cost international roughness index uh, uh, survey equipment uh, that could be a mobile phone as well. Uh, Bridge management system uh, is something that is uh, currently missing. Uh, in uh, <clears throat> although that the Chai got developed uh, a good system, uh, uh, there are some functionalities related to maintenance planning uh, uh, that should be uh, included in the uh, in the full scale bridge management system. Uh, the survey <clears throat> equipment uh, uh, should be upgraded at the PIC. Uh, that includes uh, the GPS device and the camera for the truss vehicle. Uh, of course, uh, another uh, survey vehicle uh, would make uh, the data collection uh, uh, <clears throat> faster. And then the, uh, this uh, uh, maintenance planning tool uh, <clears throat> should uh, follow uh, or uh, if there are any uh, changes in uh, uh, the planning uh, uh, processes and uh, Ramos processes in the future. And uh, 
also because well, RAMS uh, is about network level of planning. Uh, uh, we can plan uh, based on uh, the collected data, but then uh, it is uh, impossible to uh, plan in very detailed levels uh, for each routine maintenance work, uh, a patching of each pothole, because uh, that uh, uh, road condition uh, uh, can change uh, uh, very fast. And then uh, uh, I think that uh, we should look at uh, how this uh, routine and winter maintenance uh, planning uh, should actually uh, happen. Uh, and uh, that is related to also what kind of funding uh, uh, criteria are implemented. So <clears throat> Thanks for listening and uh, let's have then a uh, uh, lively discussion concerning uh, uh, the next phase. Thank you, Konsta. Um, before we, we go on to the, the last uh, presentation, so, um, Komsa has, has shared the, the experience of, of uh, the, the ADB consultant team in developing the, the road asset management system in, in the Kyrgyz Republic, uh, explaining what they have done, how, uh, how many kilometers roads they've already been able to survey, um, development of the database and of the, the planning module. Um, so that is the, the, the first phase of uh, RAM's development with ADB support and this last presentation will start looking at the next phase. What what do we need to do next? But before we start with this, I, I just wanted to see if there are any questions uh, for for Consta about the, the current phase of uh, ADB support to RAM's development. Does anybody have any questions or need any clarifications? If you have any questions, just raise your, your virtual hand, as it were, or uh, in this case, you can also just directly speak. If not, then I will proceed. Uh, I do expect that uh, after this presentation, this final presentation, we will have some discussion. Uh, and I really hope that you will actively participate because we really need your input to determine what we need to do in the next phase of uh, uh, ADB support to the development of, of the road asset management system in, in Kyrgyz. Uh, the budget we have available is limited, so we can't do everything and we need to prioritize what needs to be done. But let me first uh, present on what type of activities could uh, be included under this next phase of uh, ADB support. So we've had the first uh, presentation just to introduce the RAMs in general terms. Uh, Consta has spoken about the, the current and uh, the previous and ongoing uh, efforts in, in developing uh, the road asset management system in, in the Kyrgyz Republic. And I will start talking now a bit more about the integration of, of the road asset management system into the framework of the Kyrgyz Republic. Next slide. So when we look at uh, the current status of RAM's development in the Kyrgyz Republic, we see that we're in that second phase of, of development. We are trying to collect data for most of the road network uh, at the moment Consa and his team are collecting data for all the paved roads uh, that are managed by the ministry and as he mentioned a next step would be uh, to collect data for the unpaved roads as well uh, there's a an extended uh, there's a, uh, a database has been developed by the team which has uh, extended functionality and they've already started carrying out the data analysis through an integrated planning module. So there's a planning module integrated into the, uh, the RAMS database with its own planning uh, web interface. 
but they've also been using external software in the form of HDM4. And most of this data collection has been carried out by uh, the government through the Production uh, Innovation Center. So the consultants have been supporting data collection and data entry and data processing, but a lot of the work has been carried out by uh, staff of the Production Innovation Center with support from uh, the road management uh, department. So the next phase that we are looking at is, of course, completing the, the development stage, but also uh, the integration of the, uh, of the road asset management system into the, the, the surrounding framework. Just get rid of this. So if we look at the, the current ADB support, the current phase of ADB support, uh, data has been collected for nearly 6,000 kilometers of paved roads in 2018 and 2019. The remaining paved roads are currently being uh, surveyed and Consta already mentioned that they, the, the length that has been surveyed is already up to 7,000 kilometers at the moment. They've carried tra out traffic counts in 231 locations. So the traffic counts allow us to determine the importance of a road, but it also allows us to determine how that traffic will impact the condition of the road uh, in, in the future. Um, they've developed a comprehensive database um, that allows us to store the data and to access the data, to visualize the data either in tables or in maps or uh, with the photographs or the, the graphs uh, of, of the roughness, for instance. So different ways of visualizing the data and combining different data sets that will allow us to properly determine uh, what is going on in, in the, the road network. They've developed the, the planning module. So there's a planning module uh, that is based on a, a decision matrix. So depending on the the, the condition of the roads, the, the amount of tra uh, cracking, the amount of alligator cracking, uh, potholes, uh, the roughness, and of course the, the, uh, the traffic level. It, that decision matrix allows you to determine what kind of treatment should be carried out. And once that treatment has been selected, it allows you to determine the, the budget you need to actually carry out that treatment. And that decision matrix is developed based on the HDM4 analysis that they have carried out. And they've created a lot of capacity, uh, both within the ministry, but also within the production innovation uh, center that has been involved in much of the, the data collection and the data processing and the entry of data into the database. But as Consta has mentioned, the development of the system, the, the road asset management system is not yet complete. We don't have data for the entire road network. We, we don't have data for the unpaved roads yet. We, uh, the bridged uh, data is, is very limited. The tunnel data is very limited. We know where they are and more or less uh, what, what kind of bridges they are, but we don't have detailed information on, on their condition. Uh, the database is also not yet structured for, for these types of data. Uh, for instance, for unpaved roads, we would collect very different types of data on in terms of uh, surface condition than we would do for paved roads, and that needs to be ad adopted. The type of analysis we do, uh, the, the, the criteria we use for planning and for prioritizing would be different for unpaved roads than it would be for paved roads. And of course, it would be very different for bridges and tunnels. So those are the areas that need to be developed in order to complete the, uh, the road asset management system. So when we talk about uh, future support uh, and then the next phase of uh, ADB support to road asset management system development, we talk first of all about data collection, uh, collecting data for the remainder of the road network. So, 5,800 kilometers has already been completed. It has been processed. It's already entered into the database. Currently, there's 2,000, nearly 2,600 kilometers of remaining paved roads where the data collection is ongoing, and that still needs to be processed and entered into the database. 
but then we still have 10,600 uh, kilometers of unpaved roads for which we have no data. So that will data that will require additional data collection. It will require different types of survey equipment, as mentioned by Consta. But we also have to think about improving the data collection. For instance, on traffic counts, the, the Consta and his team have uh, carried out traffic counts in 230 locations, but those are all one day traffic counts. So we have to think of carrying out longer traffic counts, at least in, in some of the more important roads, carrying out those traffic counts at different types of the, at times in, in the year, and maybe installing some permanent traffic counts. Uh, the same for bridges and tunnels to expand the, the types of data that we collect. And uh, as me, uh, Consa mentioned about the, the falling weight deflector meter to think about collecting data on pavement strength for the different roads in the road network. Now, although this is all very useful and, and we need to think about uh, collecting additional data, we have to be very careful that we don't expand the data collection too quickly. Data collection costs money, it costs effort, it costs resources. And if we don't have the resources available to collect all that data, um, there's a danger that it, none of the data gets collected. This is a situation that we've seen in Azerbaijan, for instance. They've collected a lot of data for their road network. They spent $10 million collecting data uh, in, in their network, but they weren't able to sustain that level of data collection. And because of that, they, they currently have problems with uh, the road asset management system because it's dependent on this uh, large volume of, of data collection. So it's much more preferable to apply a system where you start simple, you limit the amount of data you collect initially. And once that works properly and you, you see that you need additional data, you can always expand in the future. And that's an approach that is applied, for instance, in Georgia and Pakistan, where they collected very limited data for a number of years, and only now are they expanding the amount of data that they collect. Slide six. Um, but future support for the development of the system also includes further improvements to the database to, to allow unpaved roads uh, to, to be entered, to allow data for bridges and tunnels to be entered, to further expand the functionality uh, of the database, to, to actually meet the needs of uh, the ministry. And that will also depend on the ministry actively using the, the road asset management system to see what do they want changed, what do they want uh, improved. And of course, the, the data analysis. Uh, Consa already mentioned that they have a planning module for paved roads, but for unpaved roads, you would need a different type of planning module with different criteria, different algorithms that would also allow you to plan maintenance and repair needs for, for unpaved roads. And the same goes for bridges and tunnels. So there's still quite a lot that needs to be done for the system itself. But the system itself forms needs to be integrated into the wider context or framework. So we want, if we actually want to use the road asset management system, it has to be integrated into the institutional framework. It has to be integrated into the planning procedures. It has to be linked to the financing levels and the, the annual budgets that are allocated to road maintenance and road repair. And of course, you need the implementation capacity to actually carry out all these plans that, that uh, we are preparing with the road asset management system. And for this second phase of ADB support, that is an area where uh, we see a lot of work uh, needs to be done to actually integrate the, the existing road asset management system into this wider context. So that uh, slide eight, so that looks at the institutional side um, where we need a, a small team of dedicated people who are actually in charge of operating the RAMs, who make sure that the data is collected every year. It doesn't have to be done in-house, but it can also be uh, outsourced to, for instance, the Production Innovation Center, but it needs to be done every year. 
every year the database needs to be updated and, and the data uh, needs to be entered. Every year the data needs to be analyzed uh, in order to be used for uh, planning purposes. So that is something that has to happen every year on a continuous basis. And you need some dedicated staff, both within the production uh, innovation center, but also within the ministry to uh, operate that grants. Slide nine. Um, so that a big part of that is the annual data collection. And of course, you don't need to collect data for the entire network each year but you will need to collect some data every year in order to avoid big peaks in, in certain years. And the frequency with which you do that will de determine how much, uh, what length of road needs to be surveyed every year. So I, I included two examples here. The one on the left, we see that the, the data is collected every year for international roads, every two years for national roads, and every three years for local roads which means that every year you would have to collect data for around 10,000 kilometers of roads. Now that is a, a long length of road and it's, it's quite a lot to do in, in a single year. If you reduce the frequency, for instance, for international roads, you do it every two years. For national roads, you do it every three years. And for local roads, every five years, then you can reduce the length of uh, that needs to be surveyed every year to under 6,000 kilometers, which is much more acceptable. And especially for local roads where we, we don't have very much funding to carry out significant repairs, we have to wonder if it really makes sense to collect data uh, very frequently. If that data does not lead to actual treatments being carried out. So often in, in, in most countries, we will see that the, the higher class roads are surveyed more frequently than the lower class roads. But in order to uh, ensure that that data is collected, it means we need annual contracts with the Production Innovation Center uh, about uh, for the collection of that data. And those contracts will have to define which roads will be surveyed each year and um, what kind of data will be collected. So that will need an annual budget specifically to finance the data collection by the Production Innovation Center. And that may also need a, a legal basis uh, to uh, allocate that budget to collect these data types and, and to determine the frequency with which uh, data is collected and to also facilitate the contracting of the Production Innovation Center to collect this data. So providing a proper legal basis is something that we see as essential for uh, the operation of the road asset management system. Slide 10. But it also means that we have to look at the database management. So currently the, the processing and the validation of the data and the entry of the data is done by the Production Innovation Center but it's not very clear whether the database is owned by the ministry or by the production innovation center. So that needs to be clarified. Who is the owner of all that data and who is the owner of the system itself? So that again would require proper legal basis to show the relationship and responsibilities for the database. And the same would go for the data analysis. Uh, that, that's something that hasn't been applied widely yet, uh, but will be uh, a lot more attention will be given to data analysis and, and using the data for planning in the remainder of, of this year by, by Consta and his team. But the question is who will do the data analysis? Will that also be the production innovation center or will it be a, a team within the road uh, management department under the ministry? And how can we integrate that data analysis into the planning procedures. Here again, you would need a legal basis to, uh, to ensure that the, 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 the criteria and the methods that are used in the road asset management system for analysis and planning can be used as the basis for annual planning of works and uh, 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 budgeting. But 
Apart from the institutional side, we also have to look at the actual planning procedures. And currently, the, the road asset management system is not integrated into annual planning procedures. There are very clear planning procedures in, in place in, in the Kyrgyz Republic. And we need to see how we can uh, integrate the road asset management system into that so that we can use all that data, that we can use the analysis of that data as the basis for our, our planning. And of course, the, the road asset management system, the, the database and the, the analysis of the data will not necessarily provide us with uh, the finalized plan. It will provide us with the basis for planning. So it will provide us with, for instance, in, uh, in the economically optimal allocation of the budget to different roads and to different treatment types. But there may be other criteria that we also want to integrate into the planning. For instance, by ensuring that uh, each region within the Kyrgyz Republic receives a, a certain minimum amount of, of budget, even uh, the areas with very low traffic levels, because they are remote areas and we want to ensure access to those areas that they, they may receive more budget than we would allocate based on pure economic criteria. So that also means that we have to schedule the RAMS activities, that we have to schedule when we collect the data, so that the data can be processed and analyzed in time for uh, it to be used as, as the basis for the planning procedures. So if the planning procedures start in a certain month, if the budgeting procedures start in a specific month, we have to make sure that the data and its analysis has been completed before then. And of course, for data, collection, we also have to take account of the, the seasons and the weather. We, we cannot collect data properly if, if there's snow on the roads, for instance. And uh, as mentioned before, it means we need a proper legal basis to start using the road asset management system in planning and budgeting. So it's, it's a very different approach from the current approach. The current approach, we see that the depths and the deals are involved in determining what the maintenance and repair needs are. And that data then goes up to the regional offices and up to the ministry. With the road asset management system, that uh, uh, the procedures are actually the reverse. The planning, the data is collected at the local level and the data is brought to the central level, but the planning is actually carried out at the central level by the ministry using the road asset management system. And the results of that planning are then shared again with the regional offices and the, the DAOs and the DEPs to see if, if they agree with, uh, with the analysis or if they have anything to, to add to that analysis. But that will require changes to, to relevant legislation. So uh, one, one of them is, is mentioned here, but I'm sure that there are, there are other uh, legal documents and regulations and, and laws that are that need to have certain changes in order for us to apply this new approach to planning. But it also means that we need to develop manuals and we need to provide training to staff in the ministry and staff in the uh, production innovation center. How do you actually use the road asset management system in, in, in planning and budgeting? And what do you need to do after the analysis in, in the RAMs, what additional steps are, are required? Um, for instance, using additional criteria to allocate uh, funding or to include the review by the DEPs and by the regional offices and the, and the OIs. Another area is, is financing. Um, the, the strategy, the initial strategy analysis carried out by Consta and his team uh, talks about $70 million per year that is required for maintenance and repair in, in the long term. And an additional $150 million per year required in the first five years to uh, address them, the backlog in maintenance and repair. So that's mainly capital repairs that, that need to be carried out. But in the long term, we are talking about $70 million and that will increase over time. In 2018, the allocation was only 27 and a half million. So that's only 40% of what we actually need in, in the long run. 
But we also see that of that 27 and a half million, not all of it is allocated to uh, road maintenance and road repairs. We actually see that only around two thirds, around 60% actually goes to the roads. The rest goes to uh, previous obligations, to, to the depths themselves to build, to uh, um, improve their buildings, to, to uh, maintain and replace their equipment, et cetera. So if we do not have sufficient budget, if we really have such a, a, a large uh, shortage of, of budget, the impact of the road asset management system will be limited. Of course, we can optimize uh, the allocation of the available budget and make sure that it, it has the, the greatest impact possible on, on road conditions and on road user costs. But if there's not enough funding, we will still see that the road network conditions will deteriorate over time. So once we carry out the road asset management system uh, analysis as uh, uh, has been done by Comsa and the STEAM, it will indicate that we need more funding. It will indicate that we need to allocate that funding in a different way. If you look at the funding allocation uh, above, we see capital repair, we see current repair, and we see summer and winter maintenance. What we don't see is midterm repair. And usually with road asset management systems, we see that midterm repair uh, tends to receive uh, the highest priority together with current repair. In Pakistan, for instance, when they introduced the road asset management system, they had very little midterm repair. And within a few years, midterm repair made up more than percent of their annual maintenance and repair budget. So you will see a shift in, in the, the allocation of the funding. But as mentioned before, the road asset management system can also help us to determine what the impact will be of a certain budget level on future network conditions. For instance, the current budget level of $27.5 million, even if we allocate that in an optimal manner, the RAMs can show us that over time that will lead to a deterioration of the road network. Some roads can be maintained, other roads will not, there won't be enough funding to maintain them or to repair them, and they will deteriorate. But it can also allow us to determine at which level will uh, the budget be sufficient to maintain our road network at the same in the same condition over time, and which level of funding is needed to improve our road conditions over time. And Comsta already showed a, a graph with different budget scenarios uh, showing how that analysis works. When we talk about financing, we also talk about the sources of financing, not just the level of financing, but also the sources of financing. And in the Kyrgyz Republic, of course, there was road fund uh, that existed into, until 2018. And currently there are discussions about reintroducing that road fund. So the old road fund received uh, funding from a fuel excise tax. Uh, half of the fuel excise tax went to the road fund. Uh, vehicle registration fees, uh, it received most of those, although that um, those fees were abolished. Uh, oversized and overweight vehicle fees, uh, toll revenues, and of course, general budget allocations from the government and from uh, loans and, and grants from development partners would go to the road fund. Now, especially the fuel excise tax is, is a road user charge that we see used a lot to finance road maintenance and road repairs. In 2012, the fuel excise tax was only $12 million. But in 2018, that had already increased to around $75 million, largely because of uh, increases to the tax rates, but also simply because uh, of more, more fuel consumption by the different road users. And the good thing about fuel excise tax is that as you get more vehicles and you pick on your fuel, more fuel consumption and you get more revenue to actually carry out the maintenance. 
Another big uh, road user charge in the Kyrgyz Republic is the customs tax on vehicles. In 2012, already that uh, uh, provided nearly $90 million in, in revenue. So that is another uh, road user charge that we often see that part of that is used to finance road maintenance because it's directly linked to the road users, the, the owners of the vehicles. Uh, who pay that tax. So in, in principle, there, there are enough road user charge revenues in, in the Kyrgyz Republic to actually finance the maintenance and repair needs. But that would require the reestablishment of, of the road fund and the earmarking of some of these road user charges to finance road maintenance. And that is also where this road asset management system can come in to help determine what level of budget do we actually need in order to keep our uh, road network in, in a certain condition. So the road asset management system can identify the budget needs. It can identify the optimal budget needs if we really want uh, the, the, the optimal conditions of our road network but it can also show what happens if we cannot achieve that optimal level. What happens if we only have 50% of the optimal level? Can we still keep our road uh, network in, in proper condition or do we risk uh, some of the roads uh, deteriorating to poor condition? So the road asset management system can help us determine uh, the level of funding that we need for the road fund and in, in turn allow us to uh, identify suitable road user charges to finance the road fund. But once we have those uh, road user charges and the, and the road fund financing, the RAMs can also allow us to uh, improve the allocation of the available budget to determine which roads need should receive priority to determine which type of treatments should be applied to the different roads in order to optimize the use of use of the budget. So those are two areas where we see uh, that road asset management system can actually support uh, the existence of a road fund. And in countries with road funds, we often see that they use the road asset management system in, in such a way. They use it to negotiate with the, the government about the level of financing that they receive but they also use it to negotiate with the, uh, the ministry responsible for roads about how uh, that fund is, is actually used in the different roads. And lastly, the, uh, is the area of implementation that if we have increased maintenance and repair funding or funding for road maintenance and repairs, we have increased volumes of work and we have maybe a shift in the, the type of work we carry out. We need to create the capacity in the country to actually carry out that, uh, uh, carry out those works. So when we, <clears throat> when we use the road asset management system, we will see that there will be a change in the way the budget is allocated. There will be greater attention given to roads with high traffic volumes. These are the most important roads. These uh, are the roads that uh, have the most impact on, on road user costs and on economic costs of, of transport. But we also see a shift in focus from roads that are in poor condition, fixing the roads that are in poor condition, towards uh, maintaining and repairing the the roads that are in good and, uh, or fair condition. By doing that, we can avoid that these deteriorate further and that we need costly rehabilitation or, or capital repair. So as I mentioned, in, in most countries where they introduce road asset management system, you see a significant increase in the volume of midterm repairs that are being carried out. And that can easily make up 40 to 60% of your budget allocation in the long term. It will not immediately happen, but over the next five, 10 years, 
you will see a gradual shift towards carrying out more periodic maintenance or midterm repairs. Current repairs continue to, and, and, and of course, summer and winter maintenance continue to be, remain very important. And their volumes will redu may likely reduce a, a little bit, especially if we carry out more midterm repairs and the roads are in better condition, then you will require uh, less current repairs. But more or less, they remain the same. So if this additional budget allocation to road repair and maintenance is allocated to mainly to midterm repairs, we need to create the capacity to carry out these midterm repairs. And that could be uh, uh, slide 17. So the road asset management system does not determine how these treatments are carried out, how the midterm repairs are carried out, whether that is through the local maintenance units or through the private sector. That is not determined by the road asset management system. The road asset management system simply uh, determines that midterm repair, for instance, should receive priority for that road. Or for another road, it might be capital repair. For another road, it might just be current repair and, and uh, routine maintenance. So the road asset management system only optimizes the types of treatments for the entire road network based on the available budget. Afterwards, we have to determine how we want to carry out those treatments. Do we want to do that through the in-house force accounts units, the DEUs and the DEPs, or do we want to do that through private sector companies, through outsourcing? And that will de depend on uh, the type of treatments, for instance, that we carry out. But as we see a shift towards midterm repairs, it actually creates a new demand for a type of repair that is not carried out very much in, in the Kyrgyz Republic. So that creates an important opportunity to, to involve the private sector, to create those, that capacity within the private sector to carry out those midterm repairs. That would require that contractors invest in equipment to carry out midterm repairs and that they invest in developing their skills, that they have the necessary skills to do that properly. Involving the private sector in, in midterm repairs does not necessarily affect the, the depths and the deus. Uh, maintenance and current repair will continue to be very important and will continue to be more or less at the same level as they are currently. If we start introducing uh, midterm repairs, uh, whether it's through the private sector or through uh, the deals and the DEPs, we need appropriate contracts, contracting modalities to carry these out. And these can be design build contracts, for instance, where the contractor actually designs the, the type of pavement renewal that is required. These can be lump sum contracts. So instead of having a traditional bill of quantities contract, you can have a simple lump sum contract. But it could also be an opportunity to introduce, for instance, performance-based road contracts, output and performance-based road contracts, where the contractor carries out the midterm repairs and is then responsible for current repairs and, and uh, routine and winter maintenance for a number of years. So that is an, a, a contracting mod modality which has been shown to be very efficient and effective in ensuring proper road conditions. Slide 18. So let me just finish by uh, giving an example uh, from Georgia. Now, Georgia has a smaller road network that is managed by the roads department, so under the ministry. Uh, it has 7,000 kilometers of uh, roads that are managed by the roads department compared to the nearly 19,000 kilometers managed by Ministry of Transport and Communications in, in the Kyrgyz Republic. But that is because all the local roads have actually been decentralized to the municipalities. So the roads department sometimes provides some support to the local roads, but most of the local roads are managed by municipalities. 
uh, all the implementation in Georgia is outsourced to the private sector. So uh, capital repairs, midterm repairs, current repairs, uh, uh, routine maintenance, winter maintenance is all outsourced to the private sector. And actually for current repairs and, and routine and winter maintenance, those are uh, contracted out in three year contracts uh, covering a large network. So I think they have uh, 24 contracts for the entire country. The, in Georgia, they, they started the development of their road asset management system back in 2008. So that's already nearly 15 years ago. Uh, every year they carry out a pavement survey data. Uh, say they collect pavement survey data and uh, that survey is carried out directly by the RAMS unit. So under the roads department, they have a small RAMS unit, which has three staff and those three staff directly collect the data for uh, the 7,000 kilometers of roads. They don't do the full 7,000 kilometers each year. They do around 5,000 kilometers each year. Um, so international roads are, are surveyed every year. Secondary roads are surveyed every two years. So every year they do half the secondary roads. Traffic data is collected by the maintenance contractors. So there are 24 maintenance contractors and each of them is required to have traffic counting equipment and to carry out traffic counts on each of the roads that they are responsible for each year or actually uh, a number of times each year. The, the data they collect currently is still very basic, uh, uh, similar to what is being collected in, in uh, the Kyrgyz Republic. So they collect, uh, you can see the survey vehicle at, at the bottom there. They, they collect uh, data on, on roughness using the laser profilometers. They collect data on um, uh, GPS coordinates and the road geometry, and they collect data on distance measuring. So, um, it's, it's very much focused on the pavement. And that, that means that they collect all of their data through uh, drive over surveys. At the moment, they are purchasing additional equipment. They, they are purchasing the automated laser crack measurement system. So that will, instead of using the, the video data to determine the amount of surface dis distress, they use this equipment to uh, measure it directly. So that reduces significantly the amount of time in processing the data. But they are currently expanding the amount of data they, they want to collect. They want to collect data for uh, their road passports. So they want a much more extensive uh, road inventory data. And they also want to start collecting data on condition of bridges, condition of uh, tunnels, etc. So they're currently preparing the terms of reference so that that can be outsourced. It will be carried out by consultants, not by uh, the RAMS unit itself. Um, they have, instead of a, uh, a custom-made database like you have in the Kyrgyz Republic, they use off-the-shelf software. So they use uh, ArcGIS uh, as, as their database um, they're having problems because they have they use the desktop version, so they, they can't uh, they don't have remote access. So if they want to share the data, they have to actually share the database file on a USB stick and provide it to the person that wants to use it. But they they're currently looking at uh, converting to uh, other commercial software, the S3 enterprise web software that would allow us to allow them to still use GIS database system, but with remote access by by different units and different departments. So that is the, the database itself. Uh, of course, being ArcGIS, it, it has mapping functions, it has table functions, uh, uh, it has similar functionality to the database developed by Consta and his team. Uh, the actual planning, they don't have a separate planning module, but they use HDM4 uh, on an annual basis uh, for all of their planning. So the HDM4 determines the, uh, the, the annual program for the, the next year, determines which treatments 
should be done within the available budget. Uh, but once that process has been completed, completed, they go through a, a second phase of planning where they amend the, the proposed uh, treatments and, and uh, road sections to create suitable contracts, but also to integrate other criteria, uh, social criteria, such as con connecting uh, remote areas of the country, for instance. They don't have a road fund. Uh, they receive all their financing from the general budget, but because they have the road asset management system and they can justify why they need a certain amount of budget, they generally get the budget that they request. Uh, so they're able to address most of their maintenance and repair needs every year. Now, the final slide, uh, and, and the, the, the main objective of this uh, workshop or this, this training is to talk about the next phase of ADB support to, to RAM's development. Uh, Konsta in his presentation has already mentioned a number of activities that need to be done, especially to complete the, the development of the system itself. I've talked a bit more about the activities that need to be done to integrate that system into the wider context. So what you see here is seven groups of activities. Uh, the first three are related directly to the system itself. So that talks about the, the data collection, uh, the database itself, and the planning module. And the last four are more about the integration of that system into the wider context so that we actually start using it for planning and for budgeting. Um, in the right column, you see that there are some priorities uh, attached. Uh, the, the red ones are the number one priority, where we see that these are things that uh, we should carry out in, in this second phase of ADB support, and that should receive uh, a priority. So that includes things that we've been talking about uh, in, in this presentation, for instance, the the use of the, the RAMs in, in the annual planning and budgeting that we have to integrate it into the budgeting procedures and we have to provide the proper legal framework. Uh, it also includes the planning of um, capital and midterm repair at central level using RAMs so that we have to change the way in which the, the planning works. We have to look at how funding is allocated to the different regional offices and the different DAOs and DEPs, the local maintenance units based on road length condition and important based on these um, priorities identified uh, through the rounds, but also for routine maintenance and routine repair as. But also the institutionalization of, of the rounds. So establishing a dedicated rounds unit with a few staff who are dedicated to operating the rams that we can train those people that they, that they are skilled in operating the rams and they can take over from the consultants so that they are, the ministry becomes fully independent in uh, operating the rams it also looks at uh, annual budget allocations for uh, data collection by the the production innovation center so these are are areas of institutionalization and integration into planning procedures that we see as highly urgent some something that we need to achieve in this second phase of realms development but it also includes certain elements of the system itself for instance uh, the the deus and the depths carry out these spring and autumn surveys and some of the data that they collect can be used in the road asset management system but currently it, it isn't used yet um, so we need to see how can we use that data, how can we, uh, the road asset management system is also mainly aimed at uh, long-term planning for midterm repairs, capital repairs, improvement, but how can we also integrate it to help in planning for routine and winter maintenance and, and current repairs. So those we see as, as urgent areas that we really need to include in, in the next phase of ADB support. But of course, there are other areas as well 
where we need to see whether the budget would allow us to, to include that under the second phase. For instance, collecting data, more data uh, on bridges and tunnels so that we can start planning the maintenance of these, these structures. Uh, collecting uh, or at least being able to incorporate data for, for the unpaved road network into the database uh, that we are able to uh, collect and, and enter the data for bridges and tunnels into uh, the database that we have a bridge management system developed, for instance, or a tunnel management system. And developing the algorithms that we need to actually plan for unpaved roads and for, for bridges and tunnels. But also looking at upgrading the survey equipment that uh, that Constar talked about to upgrade the existing trussa vehicle with their, the G GPS receiver and the, the video camera to make sure that they are up to standard, but also having uh, another more simple survey vehicle for, for unpaved roads, for instance. Um, looking at funding levels, how can we make sure that, uh, that there's sufficient funding for the road sector that we can actually improve the, our road conditions over time, or at least ensure that they don't deteriorate again. And then there's the third level uh, where it's unlikely that we will have the budget available, but if there's a budget available, these are needs that, that we need to look at. And that is the data collection for, for the unpaved roads. We're talking about 10,000 kilometers of road. So that is uh, a costly exercise. Looking at pavement strength measurements, um, we may be able to uh, to procure the equipment, but actually carrying out the measurements for the entire network is is very expensive. But we could focus on uh, doing that in a, in a sample of roads, and of course looking at the the implementation capacity, seeing how we can involve the private sector more in in road repairs and maintenance but also looking at suitable contracting modalities. These can be performance-based contracts with the private sector, but we can also look at service level agreements with the existing local maintenance units, the, the DEUs and the DEPs. So these are priorities that, uh, that we've been looking at uh, as, as consultants. And what we would like to discuss with you as the actual people who will be using the road asset management system to see what, what you think of these priorities and maybe that you have a, a different set of priorities in mind. So let me uh, end my presentation and uh, open the floor to, to anybody who wants to comment on this. Sjersh and Konsta, thank you very much for your extensive and comprehensive uh, presentations uh, with regards to status of RAMS uh, in the country and the way forward. Thank you for sharing uh, your experience and the best international uh, practices with participants. Uh, so, dear participants, we are opening the uh, closings, the last session of our today's meeting. Uh, and we are asking you, we are inviting you to ask questions. Uh, first of all, you may address, you may ask a questions. Yes, good afternoon. I'm speaking on behalf, I'm Sergian Sonaliev. I am the coordinator of the ADB projects. Uh, thanks for a very exciting and comprehensive presentation. Thank you very much. We have learned a lot of new uh, things that were presented, uh, but uh, we also have a few follow-up questions to ask. First of all, I would like to briefly speak about the second phase of the RAMs. I have some feedback and I would like to comment as to what we would like to see as the outcome and the output of the implementation of the second phase. We, if we, well, speaking briefly about the second phase, we would like to see 
the activities that would cover the majority of the road network in our country and cover the bigger scale of data. We also would like to see the coverage of data on road infrastructure, tunnels, bridges, so that we have a full picture of the entire road network across the country. So, the, well, in a nutshell, this is uh, what we want to see as the outputs and outcomes of the implementation of the phase T of two. We have already discussed this uh, with uh, the uh, road management department and other stakeholders, and we also have a number of questions, related questions, uh, uh, regarding the vision and we also would like to ask uh, if uh, any countries uh, have already had such an experience that this work has been implemented in few phases like in our case do you have any experience uh, in implementing similar activities in several stages or phases in other countries and what were the outcomes of such uh, arrangement so yes thank you very much over to you so would you please respond to this question and uh, later if consta wants cannot of course yes um so regarding the the implementation in in different phases this is very common in, 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 in uh, road asset management system development. What we, uh, I, I've been looking a lot in, in uh, the development of RAMs in, in the different CARIC uh, countries, but also beyond CARIC. Uh, we see that the, the actual going through these different phases from, from piloting to development to integration, that takes at least 10 years to actually do it properly to have a, a real system in place that works properly and that influences planning and budgeting and financing, etc. So doing that with development partner support necessarily means that you're talking about several phases of support. Uh, often there is a first phase, first development partner project that finances the, the pilot, for instance, which is the case in, in the Kyrgyz Republic, which was uh, funded with World Bank support. Uh, second phase, which develops, uh, further develops the, the road asset management system and uh, in, into a system that actually can be used for, for planning. And often a, at least a third phase where you see the, the actual integration and it actually being adopted and integrated into government systems as, as the basis uh, for planning and budgeting. So it is very common to see these different phases and they can be supported by different development partners or different projects of the same development partner. Um, uh, personally, I expect that the next phase, of course, it is very important to uh, expand the data collection to include the rest of the road network and to include all these structures, especially bridges and tunnels, the, the large structures. Um, but even if you have collected all that data, what you end up with is a database with a lot of data that is only uh, useful if you actually start using it for planning and uh, budgeting. So in parallel with expanding the data that, that uh, for the rest of the road network, you would need to start incorporating it into your planning system. But even then, I expect that after this second phase of ADB support, you will likely need some more support to even further develop the, the system itself and further develop the capacities within the, the government. Because as you start using the system, you will identify additional needs that you, you want to be, to be included in the, in the rounds or some things that uh, additional data requirements, for instance. And we, again, it, it takes 
it takes a long time to have it integrated. At least 10 years is, is my uh, experience from those countries which actually have an integrated system. So if you look at Georgia, they started in 2008 and only in the last few years that they really have a system that works well. But even they are still developing their road asset management system. They are expanding the data that they're collecting. They are um, uh, starting to outsource more and more of, of the data collection and the data analysis, etc. So it's, it's not something that you do. And then after phase two of ADB support, you say, now it's finished, now we are done. It will continue to develop. But yes, you will need several phases of uh, support to actually have something which you can operate yourselves. Uh, thank you, Serge. Uh, maybe uh, our ADB colleagues uh, uh, can add, if you want, of course. Uh, maybe later. Yes, if not, then Sanjar, uh, please proceed to your next question. So, first question was a really very good one. Excuse okay, me, your second question. Excuse me, Mervin. Uh, Oh, you know, okay, go ahead, please, please go ahead, yes. Okay, thank you, Mirdin. Uh, uh, Serge, would you please, uh, would you please put the slide number, I think, 11 of your first presentation. The table showing, uh, table showing the car country's experience in arms development. Yeah. I think this is uh, slide number, 11 or 12, uh, that's the table of showing uh, the RAMS development stats. Yes, yes, thank you. Um, thank you for the participants and then also thank you for this good, uh, very important and good question. Uh, I just would like to share my uh, experience in developing RAMS uh, in uh, two countries, uh, uh, two or three countries, uh, <clears throat> because uh, um, this table shows uh, the current status of RAM, RAMS development in car countries, including uh, Kyrgyz Republic. And then if you see Georgia and Pakistan, uh, and uh, as Serge already explained that, Georgia is not yet completed the data collection. Uh, data collection uh, for entire network. That's my understanding. Is that correct or not, Serge? If, uh, please correct me if I am wrong. And then uh, they, uh, they now advancing to using RAMS in their planning process in parallel of collecting more data uh, for entire network. Is that correct, Serge? Yes, so they, they collect pavement data for, for the entire network, but they don't have uh, extensive inventory data and uh, data on, on tunnels and bridges yet. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, as you and say, then, they're using it for planning already, and now they're starting to expand the data collection. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And then also Serge, may, uh, Serge also uh, mentioned that Azerbaijan already spent $10 million to collect uh, extensive data, but this, uh, uh, however, they are not benefiting from uh, this uh, collected data because um, the RAMS or I can say the planning tool is not institutionalized in Azerbaijan. Is that correct, Serge? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. They okay. have a very nice database, but the, the integration is not complete yet. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I also would like to uh, mention my experience in two countries. One is Mongolia. Um, I processed the TA to develop uh, this uh, RAMS, uh, to develop this uh, database for Mongolian road network. And then they collected the uh, data for entire road network, but 
Now, if you see the table and then the, this database is not being used, the uh, data analysis is not being uh, uh, mainstreamed, and then uh, even there is a RAMS unit, and then uh, the integration of the plan tool is not uh, uh, become uh, in uh, Ministry of Transport's uh, uh, function. So, uh, what I want to say is uh, data collection is, of course, uh, is needed, but uh, if uh, the planning tool is not uh, uh, being used, and then also continuous data collection is not uh, uh, in place, in that case, all efforts spent for creating this database is just uh, uh, can be left uh, as a paperwork on a decision maker makers uh, table and then they they still uh, still come back to using the traditional planning method which is very similar uh, similar to the current Kyrgyz uh, pl uh, planning uh, process of uh, maintenance works and also I had the project in Cambodia and then Cambodia also developed the RAMs in several years ago, but you know, uh, the data is not uh, being used. And then all uh, servers, all database, everything was just kept. And then even they outdated and then no use of them. So um, having said uh, uh, this, I uh, personally would like uh, to suggest that uh for fish to uh it uh, uh can be more beneficial for remote C to start a pilot uh, oper operationalization of uh, uh the maintenance plan tool which is being delivered by thin road and uh, be, uh, and then use whatever data uh is collected or will be collected at the end of the uh, end of the phase one and then to see uh, what uh, uh, what it is like this new planning uh, process uh, uh, and then uh, uh, to understand the benefit uh, the advantage disadvantage of uh, uh, of developing this uh, new tool, uh, developing of the data collection uh, um, process. And also going through this process, I believe that MOTC will better understand how much resource would be needed to mainstream, mainstream this uh, new process in MOTC's uh, function, uh, which includes how much budget is required, uh, would be required for that data, uh, data collection for analyzing of them and then how much is needed uh, for equipment renewal or equipment modernization for coll collecting data, et cetera, et cetera. So um, in short, I would like uh, uh, to support what uh, Serge is proposing to us to consider under RAMS phase two. Thank you, over to you, Mirdin. Uh, thank you very much, Yuna, for your comment and uh, suggestions. Uh, Sanjar, sorry for keeping you waited. Please go ahead with your next question. Sanjar, ваш следующий вопрос, пожалуйста. Sanjar, please ask your next question. Thank you. Uh, we received the more additional information regarding the implementation uh, of this project in other countries uh, so it was useful if you take our country and if we talk only about a good thing then uh, we collect uh, all this data and the data will be used and the system will be operational so the question regarding the frequency of updating this data what should be the optimal frequency so this is a question how often we should update the data in the system? Uh, so that's a question you wanted to ask. 
Serge and Consta, please. Um, let me just answer and then Consta can, can answer as well. Uh, the, the frequency with which you collect data is, is you're basically looking for a balance between uh, having data that is up to date and uh, the cost of collecting that data. Um, and in doing so, we also distinguish between inventory data. So the, the actual inventory data doesn't change very quickly and that can be collected less frequently, but the condition data and the traffic data that will change more rapidly. Uh, so that needs to be collected more often. For, uh, in, in many countries, we see that the, the most important roads that data is collected either every year, uh, that, but that we see more in, in smaller countries or every two years. That data is at most two years old. So condition data and traffic data is at most two years old. The inventory data may be a bit older than that, up to five years. And for the lowest level roads, um, it, the frequency is usually somewhere between every two years and every five years. And, uh, but it also depends how much budget is available for treatments. If like in the Kyrgyz Republic, we have a very limited budget. It means that most of that budget will go to international roads and uh, national roads and very little will go to local roads. So even if we collect data for the local roads every year, if there's no budget going to actually carrying out works in these roads, that data will not be very useful and it may make sense to uh, collect it less frequently. So say uh, every five years. Um, so that is something we, we really need to uh, look at um, how frequently we, we do this and what are the costs involved? What is the budget that you have available for, for data collection? I, I showed in on the one slide that if we do all the international roads every year, national roads every two years and local roads every three years, we need to collect data for 10,000 kilometers every year. That is a, a long length of road to survey every year. And that means we need to put a lot of budget there and we need to maybe even expand the capacity of the production innovation center to collect that data. Whereas if you do it less frequently, you can reduce the length of surveys every year to something around 5,000, 6,000 kilometers, which is more uh, feasible. Um, I, I see a number of hands from Michael and uh, Thomas. So uh, let me hand over to, to Thomas first and then Michael. Okay, thank you. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. All right, thank you. Uh, my name is Thomas Herz. I'm a senior transport specialist and I'm working with SEARTS in this aspect of the road asset management and performance based contracting uh, initiative from CARIC. Uh, I have a particular question. I was impressed to hear that, if I remember right, Consta, that about 200 or 200 plus traffic counters had been installed. Is that correct? Uh, <clears throat> the counting period was only for one day. <clears throat> so we procured uh, five counters and then uh, <clears throat> transferred uh, these between uh, traffic points. So oh, yeah. 230 points have been covered. Uh, just to get a better understanding to what Sayers has referred to, do you have any idea of the AADTs let's say very general uh, by length of uh, network. Or I, I rephrase the question, of the 10,000 kilometers, how many are low and very low volume roads? Uh, I don't remember by heart, but we have the data. If you want, I can uh, find it out for you. But I think you're... you're Thomas, is uh, that if, if you actually look at the traffic levels, and I think I, I read that in one of Comstas reports, that the, the portion of the road network that has significant traffic levels is actually very low. It's around 10% uh, or 20% of the, the paved road network. 
and the rest has very low traffic levels. Right. Okay. There was some sort of uh, what I thought it might be, and and that might uh, support what you had said earlier, sir. That I, while I think it's very beneficial to have a GPS surveyed inventory of all roads, but uh, if the case is that there are very limited resources, then maybe a focusing is needed to make the best use of current as well as, as future allocation of budgets. Not to say to neglect the, the local roads or the low level traffic roads, but to further pilot and start implementing and particularly to institutionalize the use of the RAMS data. So that might be an aspect to consider. Thank you. Uh, Michael, you had a question or a comment? Uh, I have a comment. Um, so just to go back on the on the usage of the network in terms of um, the traffic. So I think the figure that I read from the sort of analysis report is that about five percent of the network carries the iron or more vehicles. Uh, per day. Then if you bring it a, a bit down further and look at what proportions carries more than 3,000 vehicles per day, it's a 15%, 14 to 15% percent of, of the network. So it's a relatively small amount of traffic. And that really can help to inform um, the strategy of data collection in addition to the other constraints around budget um, and those. Simply because if you have um, highly traffic roads, um, the expectation is that the performance of the roads can change faster compared to a lot of the roads. I'm just talking about paved roads here. I mean, it's a different story for uh, unpaved roads. Um, in that case, the strategy could be designed in such a manner that uh, such roads that are you know, highly trafficked may be considered to be more important in the hierarchy. You can collect the data uh, more frequent. On the other hand, uh, like was mentioned before, data like inventory doesn't have to be collected frequently. So um, you have already done almost an inventory of most of the paved road network that has now been embedded into the asset management system. What needs to happen now is to ensure that this is a skilled RAMS team that can update this inventory. So for example, if some works have been carried out on a network, that has changed the alignment or introduced a new road that needs to be reflected within um, the system so that the inventory can be updated uh, um, in that way. And then after five, six years or so, again, you can create another inventory. I think that's one of the reasons why in parallel to partial data collection, improving the systems, it's also important to strengthen the institutional framework uh, for RAMS. So implement um, the RAMS um, team that the skills can be developed and they can continue to implement and maintain the system. The other point I'd like to make is that within the scope of phase one, we recognize the importance of having a data collection strategy. And that, that actually forms part of the terms of reference uh, for phase one. And I understand that that particular work will be included within the, the RAMS manual, the data segment manual that is yet to be developed. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for all your responses. Uh, uh, we have uh, a couple of questions uh, from uh, Department of Road Management in chat box. And uh, let me translate, translate them into uh, English, yes. So, uh, first question is, uh, uh, can we use uh, your slide with priorities as a roadmap for developing uh, terms of reference of uh, RAMS phase two? This is first question. Let's go one by one. So, Serge, that was your slide. Please yes. go ahead. So, let me just uh, show that. Um, the, uh, 
I, I believe that the, this slide can be used as a, as a basis for term for the, developing the terms of reference and also for uh, determining the, the cost of each of these activities. Um, we would have to agree on what the, the priorities are. Uh, as I mentioned, I expect that the, the, the activities that are identified as priority one here will easily fit within the budget we have for, for phase two. Um, I also expect that maybe some of the uh, priority two activities may be included, uh, but we will likely not have enough budget to do all the priority two activities. And certainly priority three activities will be difficult to, to finance because these, these are either activities that have a, a low priority or activities that have a high cost. Uh, if we're talking, for instance, data collection for unpaved roads, simply because of the large length of these roads, it, it becomes very costly to co collect data. Um, maybe I can also respond to the other question that was in the chat box. Uh, because it's, it's, it's very related and it's, uh, I, I realized that it's a, uh, we weren't very clear on that. The other question uh, that was managed, uh, mentioned by the road management department is about the, whether if we focus on, on the, the integration and the institutional component, whether we don't risk uh, the existing data that we have for the paved road network becoming outdated while we are uh, talking about integration. And that is certainly a, a, a valid point. Um, much of the, 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 the data for the road, the paved road network was collected in 2018, 2019. So it's already nearly two years old. Uh, so it, it needs to be renewed, especially the condition data and probably also the traffic data. The inventory data is, is still okay. So that is something that we have to add in, in, this, uh, in this table that we actually need to renew the data for the, the paved road network. And as far as I am concerned, um, that would actually have priority to update the condi condition data for the paved road network above collecting new inventory condition and traffic data for all of these unpaved roads. Um, as Michael has been saying, the, the, the length of roads that actually carry most of the traffic in, in the Kyrgyz Republic is, is not very long. It's, it's not a very long length of roads and those can easily be surveyed. Uh, it's when we come to these roads with very low traffic volumes, especially the unpaved roads, then we're talking about very long lengths of, of road that will be very costly to survey. So I, I do expect that we will have to do some uh, data collection under phase two. Uh, and that is also important to make sure that the production innovation center continues to develop their skills and, and their ability to collect this data. But personally, my, my focus would be on updating the condition data for the paved roads rather than ex immediately expanding the data for unpaved roads because then we, we end up with up-to-date data for unpaved roads and outdated data for paved roads. Uh, Kamsta, you, you will likely also have uh, thoughts about this. Uh, yes, thank you. <clears throat> That's a uh, uh, very valid uh, points you made. And, uh, uh, <clears throat> and now if we think about uh, <clears throat> these technologies also, uh, developing and uh, if we think about uh, the data collection and uh, pavement distress inventory, it was manual and visual work and it was uh, um, very time consuming and uh, <clears throat> uh, it, it was underestimated how much time it takes. But nowadays, uh, as we have uh, uh, machine learning algorithms uh, doing uh, that work uh, automatically, uh, that could uh, reduce uh, uh, the amount of work and uh, <clears throat> having also skills developed already. So uh, I think that uh, uh, this uh, paved road uh, uh, survey uh, could be done uh, much easier and faster. Uh, when it comes to uh, other data collection, this uh, bridge data, for example, 
it is already becoming a rather old, it's over five years old and usually breach inventory data is collected every uh, five years. So uh, there's a definite uh, need for focus, focus there. Uh, and then uh, these unpaved uh, uh, roads, as uh, uh, Thomas mentioned, uh, and then we don't need to collect uh, uh, detailed condition information uh, because uh, with gravel roads, uh, then uh, it requires, well, you, you don't uh, need to go to all the uh, details of defects, uh, but it would be certainly nice to know uh, the lengths and the whereabouts of uh, uh, these roads. So this kind of uh, light uh, uh, weights uh, GPS uh, survey, uh, even uh, uh, I think that that kind of survey could uh, fit in the budget. Okay, thank you, Consta. Any additions from ADB side? Uh, okay, maybe later. Uh, so, uh, dear participants, uh, дорогие участники, пожалуйста, uh, задавайте ваши, ваши вопросы. So, dear participants, uh, please speak up. Use of this opportunity. We have not yet heard from uh, the PIC and uh, the uh, road management department. And maybe uh, we will also hear some questions from the Ministry of Economy and Finance. Please speak up. The floor is yours. So, we are waiting for your questions and uh, comments. Uh, do we have any participants representing uh, the Production and Innovation Center? Are they present? Well, in that case, uh, we will give the floor to the Department of Road Management uh, because you are the ultimate user of the uh, RAMS. So, please, the floor is yours. Share your insights, comments, feedback, your ideas. Okay, we will wait a bit more. We are having a participant representing the Ministry of Economy and Finance here today, Mr. Erlan Ajikulov. And of course, it's understandable that if the Ministry of Finance does not allocate money, there will be no possibility to maintain roads properly. So if you have any questions or feedback on the road asset management system, please speak up. So, yes, Erlan, we can see your greeting in the chat box. Oh, yeah. So, if your mic doesn't work, you can actually text your question via the chat box and we will read it out. So, please text your question. And while we are waiting, maybe we will give the floor to somebody else. So, Mr. Erlan, in the chat box, he says that they will share their comments later. Uh, comments that uh, they will respond, uh, they will provide their comment or questions uh, uh, later, maybe after today's uh, workshop. Sanjar, is anybody here representing the production and innovation center? because they were quite actively involved into the phase one so we would like to hear their questions and feedback yes good afternoon can you hear me yes we can loud and clear so I, uh, yes i represent the production and innovation center my name is Mider, and i have a question regarding the data collection all of the presentations well we have listened to, to the speakers today and uh, it was quite interesting and i would like to ask a question regarding data collection on all unpaved roads 
what method are you going to use to collect data on gravel roads and what is the difference between uh, planning of data collection for paved and unpaved roads what is the difference between the data collection methods for two different types of roads so this is my question uh seriously do you understand the question yes um, okay please go ahead let me allow uh, Konstant to, to respond first because he's been he's been working on this more and I'll respond afterwards. Uh, <clears throat> yes, we have uh, uh, <clears throat> several options. Uh, this is a good question. What uh, definitely is needed is uh, uh, a GPS device to track the location. And uh, <clears throat> then uh, uh, we could also have a camera uh, as for, uh, for paved roads. And uh, because the International Roughness Index uh, uh, devices are uh, relatively cheap, but that could be uh, put into the same vehicle uh, without much increasing the price. Uh, then uh, when we think about uh, the planning of uh, maintenance uh, for gravel roads, uh, uh, it is uh, uh, quite uh, different and uh, uh, it's more difficult to uh, plan uh, uh, the maintenance works automatically based on uh, other data. Uh, <clears throat> There are certain maintenance works that are required uh, for gravel roads. Uh, that is uh, uh, <clears throat> grading, and uh, uh, that's also ditching, uh, uh, putting the shape in the right format, and uh, also maintaining uh, the crown uh, of uh, the road. And then uh, re-graveling, uh, uh, which can take place every five years or so. And then we need to probably develop the methodology based also on the available equipment and know-how, how the actual maintenance will be done on the gravel roads. But as a starting point, so we could collect the photos, IRI and the GPS, and then later on decide uh, if uh, we need uh, different kind of kind of uh, condition variables uh, collected uh, uh, from the photos, uh, but uh, they are in any case useful if uh, uh, works are being planned to see uh, 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 the roads on the photos. So, Serge, you can uh, continue. Yes. Yes. So, um, what Kongsa has already mentioned is is that. Unpaved roads are, are, are very different from paved roads, and the main difference is uh, how they deteriorate. Um, a, a paved road will generally uh, deteriorate in, in a predictable way. You will start seeing some cracking, you will start seeing some potholes, and afterwards you, you, uh, it will follow a, a certain pattern of deterioration, which will depend on, on certain, the speed of which will depend on, on traffic levels and, and weather, et cetera. Uh, with unpaved roads, it's, it's very different. You can have a very nice gravel road, and if uh, you have a very wet season and heavy traffic going over it, it can deteriorate within one year very easily. So uh, collecting, for instance, the, the traditional data that we collect for paved roads, which is the, the roughness data and the surface distress data, if we collect that for unpaved roads, it doesn't tell us very much about the, the, the condition uh, of, of uh, it doesn't really allow us to predict the condition of that road over time. For gravel roads, what we actually need to know is, is the thickness of the gravel layer that remains on, on the road. Uh, that will tell us how many years we, we can expect that gravel uh, to last before we need to put on new gravel and uh, to re-gravel the road. Uh, and for the rest, uh, what Konsa mentioned about uh, grading and reshaping the road, that is something that we have to do uh, on an annual basis or every few years, depending a bit on, on the climate and, the, and the, the amount of traffic. So the, the type of data I expect that we would collect because we're we are talking here about drive over surveys. So we have a survey vehicle driving over the road and collecting data. The roughness data is, is not very useful for us because on gravel roads, 
uh, you often have very high roughness anyway, and uh, it can change very quickly from one year to, to another. Uh, the same with the surface dis distress, uh, potholes can shape very quickly. So that kind of data is, is not as useful for unpaved roads as it is for, for paved roads. And I would actually expect that for the unpaved road network, uh, you would need to collect data on, on GPS uh, uh, coordinates of, of the road, the lengths of the road, uh, the surface type. Are we talking about gravel roads? Uh, are we talking about earthen roads? What kind of gravel is it? Is it uh, a stony gravel road or a laterite gravel road? That kind of information uh, will be very important for us. And of course, uh, uh, traffic data to know how important are these roads. For instance, do we need to upgrade, the, uh, think about upgrading these roads to a paved standard? Do they carry enough uh, traffic for that? But the actual data on condition, um, it is questionable whether uh, that is easily collected through a drive over survey. And it might actually be an option to collect that data through the DEUs and the DEPS. They carry out their spring and autumn surveys, and they may be in a better position to give us information about, for instance, the, the gravel thickness. So the, the, the type of data that you would collect would be very different for unpaved roads. And the way that you collect, uh, the way that you use that data for determining the type of treatment will also be different. So that, that would need to be developed, and then the entire data collection would be need to be carried out. Uh, whereas with the unpaved roads, that development stage has already taken place and the inventory uh, data collection has already taken place. So it's, it's quite straightforward to collect data on, on condition. The, the, the PIC, the Production Innovation Center, knows how to collect that data. They have the equipment to collect that data. So it, it can be done in a relatively inexpensive manner. Does that answer your question? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, did we answer your question? Dear participants, please respond. Yes, yes. It was excellent. Thank you. Maintenance department in chat box. Uh, it seems we don't have uh, a microphone. Uh, uh, if the system would operate uh, sustainably, function sustainably in the period when the state budget uh, experiences uh, uh, constraints, uh, difficulties, and uh, how much uh, the institutional work will be effective without sufficient financing. So this is question from Mr. Adilet Koboshev, uh, Road Maintenance Department. Uh, should I repeat or it is clear? Serge? I, I think it's clear. Okay, please um, go ahead. Yeah, so the, the road asset management system um, and the analysis that, that it carries out, it allows us to determine the, the optimum uh, budget levels that if we get those optimum budget levels, then we can uh, um, improve the, the condition of the road network as a whole. So then we can carry out all treatments that we want to carry out and where these are economically justified. However, most countries don't have that optimum level level funding. Uh, in, in a country like uh, Georgia, they have sufficient funding to, uh, to gradually improve the condition of the road network. So it, it won't be an immediate improvement, but they, they're able to mobilize sufficient funding, carry out all the current maintenance and uh, uh, the, the routine, main, sorry, routine and uh, winter maintenance and the current repairs and the midterm repairs and part of the capital repairs. Now, what happens if, if there, for instance, because of COVID there, there's an economic downturn and there's less funding available. Of course, it, it means that you won't be able to do as much maintenance and repair as you would like to do. 
whereas the road asset management system will tell you that is actually required. But the road asset management system can also be used to determine how to best allocate the funding that you have available. So for instance, uh, um, Consta had one slide where he showed uh, for different budget scenarios, uh, what the impact would be on, on long-term road conditions. But behind each of those scenarios is, uh, for instance, the HDM4 program or the decision matrix, the, the, pro, uh, the planning module, which tells you which roads should receive priority so that even with a very limited budget, you can allocate it in an optimal manner so that the, the impact in terms of improving road conditions or avoiding that road conditions deteriorate and uh, reducing as much as possible the road user costs, the, the cost to the economy, that that can be optimized. And so even if, if your budget is suddenly from say the 27 and a half million that you had in, in uh, 2018, that there's an economic downturn and you only have 10 million left because there's simply uh, there are too many other demands uh, in in in, uh, in the country. Even that 10 million can be used in different ways, and and then the rounds will help uh, determine what is the the most appropriate use of that funding, which roads should uh, receive the, that funding, and it will not only prioritize roads, but it may. Uh, um, what we often see is if there's less funding. Uh, uh, different treatment types will be carried out. So for instance, instead of doing an, an overlay on a specific road, if we know that there's not enough funds that we may decide to do uh, just a, a simple seal, that will allow us to extend the, the life of that road by a, a couple of years. And hopefully by that time, we have money to do a, a, a proper overlay. So for instance, with HDM4, you see that if you input a much lower budget uh, availability, that it will, some roads will not receive any maintenance because there's simply no funding. But even the roads that do receive maintenance and repair budgets, you will see that the treatments uh, are changed simply to try and optimize uh, the allocation of that budget. So just to, as a short answer, the, the RAMS uh, actually uh, allows you to optimize the allocation of your budget, no matter if that is a big budget or a small budget. Okay, thank you very much, Sir. So now the time is uh, 4.30. Uh, so uh, uh, let me apologize uh, that uh, this workshop is going a little bit longer than we expect. And if there are any last uh, comment, last questions uh, from uh, both sides, participants or organizers, ADB organizers and consultants, please uh, uh, go ahead. Otherwise, uh, we have uh, 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 closing remarks by Michael Anyala, our colleague from uh, Knowledge Department. Okay, it seems we don't have any more comments or questions. So maybe during next uh, workshop, we have uh, a bit more time for discussion. And uh, Michael, the floor is yours. Please go ahead. Thank you so much, uh, Mielin. Um, let me take opportunity to thank all the participants today for a very engaging and I hope a uh, very fruitful uh, workshop. So let me just reverse a bit, a bit because you know, we've had a long uh, workshop, almost three hours, I think. Um, so we started off by um, um, opening remarks where uh, the government representative, as well as uh, my colleague from ADB, reinforced really the importance of sustaining uh, road investments. So I just wanted to provide some, some background context from some of the studies that we have done uh, recently in ADB. So we found that 68% of ADB's infrastructure investments, so this includes uh, transport investments, 
the water sector investments and other infrastructure investments, 60% of those investments are considered to be less than likely sustainable, uh, which is really a very big concern uh, for us and also for the ADB board. And when we say these investments are unlikely to be sustainable, what it means is that the positive effects from these investments are considered to be less than expected, okay? And there's a lack of appropriate mitigating measures uh, to ensure that uh, these investments can last their full economic uh, or life cycle as it's intended to do Now, of those 60% investments, transport contributes the most, and specifically roads actually are considered the most uh, investments that are unlikely to be sustainable. And they said they went further to actually try to understand why are these investments considered not to be uh, sustainable. So they identified a couple of issues. Number one, poor planning, budgeting, and a lack of revenue generation. Okay. And this links directly into some of the lessons that we are learning uh, from the workshop today. Secondly, it was reported that weak institutions and also weak governance structures was a key contributor to infrastructure investments not uh, being sustainable. The recommendation was that improving asset management is one of the key priorities to addressing some of these issues. Of course, there are many other things that must be done, but better asset management what's considered to be one of the priorities for actually improving uh, sustainability of infrastructure investments. And we heard today from two of our excellent presenters on how RAMs can be used to support better asset management, particularly at the planning level where you're looking at planning at network level, RAMs can really be very, very important. And I consider the importance of RAMs on two aspects of asset management. So one, to improve strategic decision-making. So this is, for example, where you're looking at network level, you want to understand what level of investments or what budget do I need to eliminate backlog of maintenance, bring the network to say a good condition and then maintain it to a good service level uh, for the life cycle. So RAMs can play a very crucial role. In that sense, it could also help with communicating with the various stakeholders like politicians, for example. Because if you have determined your budget requirements, you can tell the politician, look, I need so much amount of money if we are to you know, bring this road network to good condition and maintain it in fair good conditions in the long term. But if you provide me with a reduced budget, say by 10% or by 20%, then based on this analytical approach, scientific approach from RAMS, this will be the impact of your investments. So RAMS can support the decision making. So in a sense, RAMS is a making tool. You should use it as a way to inform the decisions that you want to make. It will not perform magic. It will not always sudden make everything good, but it will support the process that you use to make sure that you are managing your environment better. We also heard about the importance of integrating RAMS into the planning systems the need to strengthen institutions, including setting up a road asset management team that comprises of skilled staff to ensure that we are using the RAMs in a manner that will improve the management of the network, but also in a manner that will ensure that it's sustainable. 
I think it was generally agreed that the development of RAMs is an incremental process. So it's a step-by-step -step process um, that CAG is asserted and significant improvements were made actually during uh, phase one. And phase two of the works will build on this uh, significant developments that have done, been achieved in phase one. So to this end, some of the direction of activities of phase two, as you have on your screen there, or as it was discussed uh, uh, very actively by yourselves and by all participants, is a recommendation to expand data collection in a phase or prioritized manner, recognizing some of the limitations in terms of uh, available budget, but also the recommendation is to institutionalize what has already been achieved in phase one. Okay. And we understand that the government is developing a legal basis for supporting this. And this is really very, very much welcome. Uh, we hope that also the government will financially support and sustain the ramps, particularly setting up a dedicated team and being able to support uh, their operation so that uh, they can do some of the good works that they need to do to prevent rams. Another direction of phase two activities is being able to improve some of the systems that were developed in phase one. But again, this needs to link very much to what are the key priorities that is required for the implementation uh, of rams. And this will come out from some of the experiences you will get as implemented. So I'd like to summarize by thanking all participants for joining and for actively participating in this workshop. I'd also like to extend ADB's appreciation to Serge and Consta for their very good presentations and for leading the discussions uh, today. I hope that we all found it very, very useful. Let me end by announcing that the ADB Transport Sector Group, so where I sit, is planning a virtual training on HDM4 uh, this year. Spaces for this training are limited, but we will extend invitations to participants from Kyrgyz Republic to, to join this training. So I'll end there. Thank you so much. Um, thank you very much, Michael, for your closing remarks. Спасибо всем участникам за ваше внимание, за хорошие вопросы. Thank you very much for active participation, for your valid questions, and we have been working three hours straight and we would like to apologize for taking too much of your time but i hope i do hope that the seminar that this workshop was useful and uh, if the need be you may raise your questions or share your comments via the information system of the adb and you can also download all of the presentations by following the link that i have shared in the uh, chat box and I also would like to ask uh, our rep representatives uh, of the uh, uh, Kyrgyz Republic and I also would like to thank our interpreters Rustam and Svetlana for excellent work. Uh, with that I would like to close this workshop. Thank you very much. Have a, have a nice day.